Hello, welcome to another stream. How about that? How about that? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, today is um, what? I think it's Monday. I think today is a Monday. Uh, and that means today, according to the schedule, we're supposed to be doing a uh, virtual machine in C. But I, um, I don't know. I went on a very interesting tangent for uh, already three days. Uh, and I kind of want to continue doing that, what, right? So we were uh, working on the uh, 3D graphics in OpenGL. So yeah, and I decided that today we're going to continue doing it. We so far implemented the uh, perspective correct cube, we textured it and we put a fog into the rendering of the cube and we have still have one point left, which is simple lighting and I really want to finish it today. So that's going to be the topic of today's stream. You can find the source code of the thing we did uh, on the previous streams here in the chat.
Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So, uh, let's take a look at what we have. Let's take a look at what we have. This <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, is a git branch and git fetch prune origin. There we go. Um, two, 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 two. I think we have already fetched everything, so let's rebuild everything. You got some plots, what's up? Welcome, welcome to the stream, how are you doing? Uh, wanna see something cool? Wanna see something cool? Yes. That's what we have uh, so far, which is goddamn fucking cool. Uh, yeah, it has a fog and everything. Um, so doing cube. <laughs> it's a so doing cube. Uh, so yeah, and what's cool is that all the like transformations and shit are done on GPU, including like perspective and um, um, you know uh, the translation and scaling and rotation, right? So we're not using any GLM bullshit on CPU at all, uh, right? So everything is pretty much completely on GPU except generating the mesh, except the generating the mesh. <clears throat> So, uh, let's go and see what we've got so far. So, as I already mentioned, we've done pretty much all of the points, right? We've done pretty much all of the points. And uh, the only one that is left is a simple lighting, the classical one with normals and stuff. So, but before I do that, I think I created a bunch of to-dos that I wanted to address and I forgot to commit them. Okay, fucking name it. Okay. So... <laughs> You'll have to forgive me. I was trying to prepare some to-dos, like clean up to-dos before I go into the lighting because there were some kind of like some things that I wanted to do. So uh, I'm going to go to the uh, my alternative account and just uh, commit whatever I introduced there. <clears throat> so this is Kidito, right? For some reason, this is how we decided to call the project because it was generated. Uh, we need an emote Kubers that is the cube uh maybe uh this is open source you can try to compile it on your machine and make it i i don't know how to do that i'm not really interested in doing that to be fair um all right so here's the bunch of um a bunch of to this okay so i'm gonna add main.cpp commit um what do we need to, to do add a bunch of to do's uh there we go git push origin master all right i'm slowly pushing that into the current repo slowly pushing it and uh now um let me see let me see let me see uh so let's just let's just fetch it so add a bunch of to-dos all right so if I go into the main.c, here are a bunch of to-dos. For example, I want to have a resizable screen, right? Uh, for example, right now we have a very fixed resolution um, and I kind of want the resolution to be uh, according to the according to the size of the window. I want the size of the window be the, um, be the main resolution and I want the perspective to adjust accordingly to the size. Uh, of the window because right now we see th this is the whole like size of the canvas and whatnot and it looks kind of lame in my opinion right so it would be better if it was like a full screen right like a proper full screen um so Boom. Boom. anyways so and another thing that stop tickling me uh another thing that we had is uh Hot reloadable textures, yes. I want to uh, be able to have like hot reloadable text textures uh, because replacing the texture right now requires recompiling this, the whole like workbench, which is not particularly convenient. And another thing I wanted to have is a hot reloadable mesh from an OBG file. So an OBG file is um, a 3D format. It's a very simple three. This is not what I meant. 3D format, <clears throat> OBG. It's a really simple uh, 3D format, uh, which is compatible with a lot of software. Um, as far as I know, Blender can generate these kind of files. And what's interesting is that um, we can generate it uh, ourselves as well. Right, so we can move uh, generating the mesh 
into a separate program that spits out the OBG files, which you then can open, for example, in Blender and adjust in Blender. And uh, so the mesh is not going to be generated um, at runtime. It's, it's, just, it's just going to be loaded uh, through the OBG file and it's also going to be hot reloadable. So the idea is that you would be able to regenerate the mesh and re uh, hot reload it or uh, slightly tweak it in the Blender and also hot reload it. So that's going to be the idea. <clears throat> Uh, let's talk about those interests before movies, Walt well, Disney, DreamWorks, and whatnot. Yeah, maybe it's going to be the official Zoisin intro, who knows. So this is the idea, uh, the bunch of ideas that I have, uh, that I want you to implement. So, and before we go into lighting, I want you to work on them. So, you know, just a small warm-up. Just a small warm-up. <clears throat> Anyways, uh... I'm gonna pour a cup of tea. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? While I'm pouring a cup of tea, I'm gonna put this thing to attract the viewers. I really like how it attracts the viewers. I can just do nothing. Uh, and uh, yeah, people will still watch this. How you did the fog? Uh, essentially, I know the Z distance of each individual pixel in here uh, from the camera. Right, I track, uh, I track the, uh, like a Z of each individual uh, pixel. And depending on the Z, I make it darker or lighter. The further away it is from the, uh, from the camera, the darker it becomes. The closer it is, the brighter it becomes. And this is what creates the fog. So it's actually pretty straightforward, surprisingly. Bye-bye, Jiang. See you. See you around. Good luck with the lecture. Good luck with the lecture. Bye bye, bye bye. Mm, does anyone have any other questions? Mm, and all of that that uh, that done in a shader, right? So basically, in a in a vertex shader, I pass the vertices to the fragment shader, and that way the fragment shader is capable of tracking the value of the vertices right the z value of the vertices and then i'm using this z value to calculate the distance in the fragment shader and in the fragment shader i set the uh the corresponding brightness uh so to speak um i can also probably tweak the color of the fog itself right now i'm using black color which is the color of the background which creates a pretty cool effect uh, we can go to the fragment shader and, for example, say that uh, this color is going to be a red. And as you can see, it creates a very interesting red fog. Uh, yeah, the further it away. So it's, if it's uh, too far away, it's going to be completely red. So for like a proper fog effect, the color of the fog has to be the color of the background. And that will create a proper fog effect. You see what I mean? Uh, so, yeah. Mm. Does anyone have any other questions? That's actually super fucking cool. Uh, I was actually dreaming to be able to do this kind of programming since I started programming, actually. <laughs> God fucking damn it. Yes. Uh, when I started programming, I was thinking about doing this kind of shit. Right. But I, obviously when I started programming, I just didn't have enough knowledge or competence to do this kind of shit. Holy, it took me 15 years. That's how dumb I am. That's how dumb I am. It took me 15 years to go to the level where I can draw a cube on the screen. Ah, uh, today is the day. Yeah, my dream finally came true. So, <laughs> I don't think it's uh, like this kind of programming is necessarily difficult. It's just I'm dumb. And also my programming career was heavily derailed because i needed money so i went into java enterprise development which doesn't help with learning this kind of programming so yeah my entire uh, like programming education was completely derailed by something else but luckily i managed to get out of that and uh, get on the right track finally right so something that i also want to do um <clears throat> Um, all right. What is Java Enterprise Development? It is better to not know what it is. Trust me. It is better to stay ignorant to these kind of things. Just don't don't try to understand what it is. Um, 
Vulkan doesn't work on my machine, so I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I wish I could, but Vulkan just doesn't work on my machine. Um, alrighty, so let's start. Java is a trap. It, it kind of is. I already, we already discussed that. Uh, Java is a trap because it pays a lot, right? It pays a lot and it's in a high demand, but it's such a shitty job. You're going to hate your life if you're going to do it, right? So essentially, even if you try to get out of that trap, all of the HRs and all the companies will start throwing money at you so you stay with them because there is a huge demand on Java developers. There's an absolutely huge demand on Java developers and it's really difficult to get out of it. But, well, it depends on the kind of person, right? It depends on the kind of person. Some people enjoy this kind of stuff, but I personally don't enjoy it. Um, why game devs tend to be better programmers? Uh, depends on how you measure use the quality of programmer so why how do you measure it i'm also doing a lot of java right now but it's the first time i've heard that term oh so if you're doing java you're not necessarily doing enterprise java you might be doing actual android develop. um mm. Or maybe you're also that kind of person that don't consider this a trap and you actually enjoy this kind of stuff. I don't enjoy this kind of stuff, so it is what it is. Uh, people are different. People are, in fact, different. All right, so I think we need to be able to go to JLFM and um, learn how to uh, get the resizing. Um, hmm, resize. Do we have a resize? We don't even handle the resize. So this is going to be JLFW resize. <sighs> Window guide. I remember that you have to handle a slightly different resize. Yeah, frame buffer resize. So we need to set uh, frame buffer size call back. Let's actually try to find it in the source code. Uh, user include jlfw so and I'm pretty sure I can just go here and find it almost instantaneously right call back uh, debug message call back set oh we already have it wait a second we do in fact already have it all right so then we have a window size call back and then we resize the window and stuff like that perfect 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 um, I wonder, is there any way for me to, yeah, what if I actually set the size of the viewport as, uh, you know, the new size? Yeah, it's going to be 0, 0, width and height. Um, to, to, to... Mm. Did I go to the college? First, I have two questions before I can answer it. Are you American? What do you mean by college? Um, all right. Mm, so what do I want to do? And hide. I want you to take a look at the index trail. JL viewport. Support name. Ah, uh, click, click. Okay, so these are the integers. <laughs> Uh, no, I didn't go to, to the college, I went to university. Mm. Okay, so let's rebuild this entire thing. Uh, and it doesn't compile, of course, so let me see. Now we're talking. Hmm. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> Okay. Mm. Pretty cool. Uh, 
um, that's why we need to be able to send uh, that the width and height uh, the width and height uh, to the fragment shader right now we're sending uh, width and height to a fragment shader via I think we do that in the vertex shader. Yeah, yeah, so we send it via resolution. Uh, I need to be able to actually get the size of the window. Um, uh, size of the window in this uh, thing. GLW, this is what we have. Uh, GLW. Uh, so GLFW window. GLFW window. So position function. Um, is there something like get size, um, get size, or do I really have to keep track of it? Uh, do I really have to keep track of it? I think, um, maybe struct gel FW window. Oh, it's opaque. It's completely opaque. I cannot just easily get it. I see. I see, I see, I see. Mm -mm -mm. What is a cube with perspective projection? Uh, well, it's a cube that uses perspective projection. You could have Googled up perspective projection. Right. So. Oh, this is. It didn't copy paste! Oh my god, Chromium is so slow. There we go. Uh, so, yeah. Read this article, that's what it means. Uh, yeah. GLFW. I feel like we'll have to GLFW get. Uh, is there any get window? So there's a get window. You can get the window size and you can also get the frame buffer size. Perfect. Get them for perfect, mate. So, um, uh, retrieves the size of the frame buffer of the specified window. This function retrieves the size in pixels in the frame buffer of specified window. How many times do you need to write that? If you wish to retrieve the size of the window in screen coordinates, use the get window size. All right, so this is probably what we're gonna use here. This is probably what we're gonna use. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go to here. So here is the uniform. Um, here is the uniform. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be something like uh, width and height. Uh, width and height. And then we provide the window. And that then we'll have to set the location, right? So we we'll have to set the location. Uh, I mean resolution. It has to be like that. It's gonna be width, it's gonna be height. And is that it? I think it's kind of it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's kind of it. <sighs> mm-hmm. Uh, so I also want to remove the callback because now I didn't have to keep track of this thing being resized, right? So um, resize uh, something like frame buffer. Yeah, yeah. So we need don't, we don't need to do that. Uh, window. Shiggy man, Shiggy man, thank you so much for. Uh, wait, what? Oh yeah, okay. So I see what's going on. Thank you so much for three months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, welcome to our Epic Open Jail Club. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Cheers. <sighs> All right. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, it's probably because of the filter. So, yeah. By the way, so here is the small announcement. If you're like, um, due to moderation, 
situations on my channel, I had to implement the filter. So now, if you are um, not a subscriber and not a VIP, uh, and if your message is less than 40 characters, uh, it's not going to be displayed on the stream. So, yeah. It is what it is, I'm sorry. So I need to moderate uh, my content, so that's why. So if you want your message uh, to be longer than 40 characters and still be visible on the stream, uh, you have to subscribe, at least for now. I'm thinking how to do it slightly differently. I also want to include followers. So for example, if you followed me for, for example, a day, right? Or for some period of time, um, you'll be still sending. But if you have a short message, something like to say hi, uh yeah to, to say hi you can do that and it will still display on the stream so it has to be under 40 characters um yeah but i still can see your messages you know why because i have a second monitor uh second chat without the filter you can see so for example this message is not displayed because it's uh bigger than 40 characters and this one uh, and yeah you, you see the point so i can still see them it's just they are not displayed on the stream Okay, so yeah. Uh, what's up, for? What's up? What's up? Welcome to the gym. Um, I literally stole that filter from the Chitterina wiki, by the way. <laughs> I just extended it with more conditions. But by the way, uh, is it possible to know the foliage from the Chitterina filter? Um, is it is it possible? If it's not possible, I can implement it. Doesn't really sound that that difficult. To implement because I didn't see that on the wiki. Um, I have no idea. Oh, okay. So this is something that I will uh, probably research a little bit later. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe it's, it's it's two possibilities. It's either wiki is outdated or uh, it's just not implemented. So I will just need to look into into this because uh, filters based on the followers are also going to be useful. Mm, eh, you don't have to, it's just a quick question, like, I mean, yeah. Um, all right. <clears throat> Too late, you're already in the code, <laughs> you see. Um, okay, uh, let me see, let me see. Um, so, I already removed the size, so I need to go to the, uh, to this thing. Okay. So that kind of... Oh, shit. It's actually a frame... Oh, I see. Yeah, we still need to handle... Oh, it looks so fucking shit when you resize it. <laughs> yeah, essentially, we have to also reset the GL viewport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we also have to reset the GL viewport. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm an idiot for, for not doing that properly. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so and um, what is going on, by the way? Uh, is everything okay? Uh, size, window size. So and yeah, so we're setting this thing here. Uh, everything's okay. Okay, that's that's nice. <clears throat> Uh, though this filter situation kind of makes it a little bit difficult for me to focus because now I sort of have to split my focus between like uh, filter chat and sometimes not filter chat but maybe for now I'm gonna just ignore uh, non filter chat unless I need like questions unless I'm doing like tea right and I want for questions and then in that case I can look into the uh, um, unfiltered chat unfiltered reaction chat Ignore all chat. I cannot ignore all chat. Like, why, why, why the fuck am I even streaming if I'm gonna ignore everything? Right. Sometimes you, you don't want to ignore everything. Um, all right. And we're yet to see how ignoring the filter chat affects my viewership. So I don't even know. Uh, yeah. So basically, now you cannot post a wall of text if uh, you're not subscribed. <laughs> so yeah. You cannot do that. Um, and if you subscribe, you can even post this kind of stuff. So, sure, I'm okay with that. Um, but not uh, Monka TOS. Padoru is fine. 
I can see that boring nick. I can see that actually. Uh, follow which is not there. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I will look into it, into that and see if I can implement that because that would be very useful for my specific use case. Uh, so yeah. Mm. But that will require an API request for every user, so I think that's hard to do. Uh, so follow which Uh, that's actually hard. So there's no other information about their following. There's no even IRC tags, right? So can you know that at least the user is a follower through the IRC tags? But um, if it's possible to know if the user is a follower at least through IRC tags, uh, it's so, yeah, goddamn. Well, yeah. Some sort of a cache that would invalidate. Uh, yeah, I'll have to think about it. Yeah, that will require research, but thank you. This, this is probably why it was not implemented uh, in the first place, because it's hard to decide um, right, what to do in this particular case. So yeah, that makes sense why it was not implemented. <clears throat> all right thank you thank you so much for the information mm, all right all right all right all right so yeah this is what we have mm, and i think i finally implemented what i wanted so now we have a window resize uh and do we really need screen uh screen width and screen height i didn't think so because it just depends on this thing. Uh, uh, I forgot. Mm, all right. For the characters, for this creativity, exactly. That's why Twitter became even more shit after they increased the uh, character limit. It attracted more uncreative people. Ah, get him. I think I think we did it. So now we're gonna do the following thing. Mm. Uh, make the screen uh, maybe viewport resizable, right? And we're gonna push that right into the repo. So the viewport is resizable now. Uh, so what's gonna be the next? the next thing so it's going to, be to do hot reloadable texture this one is very interesting actually i think so right now uh to reload the texture right you have to do something like this so this is how we reload the texture uh yeah there we go the, the texture has been reloaded but it requires a compilation uh and you can also put a yep in here uh yeah so here's the yep mm. Yep. <clears throat> Supi bot. There's no Supi bot in here as far as I know. Um, <clears throat> is there any way to delete a texture? Is there any way to delete a texture? GL uh, delete. Yeah, you, you can delete a texture. You can delete several, <clears throat> several textures. Mm. All right. Mm. Not really loading. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, so we need to make the texture ID sort of like a global thing. 
Um, for some reason, I'm falling asleep. Um, no. So I'm gonna go to the program. Mm. Okay. So here's the program. Here are different uniforms and whatnot. And I want to make the texture... Um, yeah, let's do the following thing. We're going to reload the texture on reloading the shaders. Essentially, um, yeah, when you press F5, everything is going to be reloaded. Absolutely everything. Shaders and the textures. So, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, so we have reload, uh, reload shaders. I have reload shaders, but maybe reloading the texture should be something different. Um, but I'm not hundred percent sure if it's going to be different or not. Um, but it could be. Mm. I don't, I don't know, for some reason it's kind of difficult for me to focus. Um, I don't understand why. It's very strange. Okay, so, yeah. So we bind the texture, then we reload the shaders. It, what's interesting is that it's in the same place, essentially, right? It's in the same place. Mm, so let me go to the reload shaders uh, and let's put everything there. Let's put everything there. So here is we uh, loading the program. The program has been loaded successfully, as far as I can tell. Uh, so the next thing probably we want to do, uh, we want to load the textures and whatnot. <clears throat> so let me find another define. Let me find another define. Uh, and of course I want to uh, um, remove that to do because that's exactly the to do I'm working on right now. Um, all right. So if we couldn't load the texture, right, I couldn't load the file, but now we don't have to exit. Right, we don't have to exit. What we have to do now is to return from the function and set um, <clears throat> uh, and set the color of the background to, to be red. Right, so essentially if you couldn't load a particular texture, if, if you couldn't hot reload the particular texture, um, it's also going to be treated as the hot reloading error. And hot reloading error is indicated with the uh, red uh, red screen, so I can probably demonstrate that if I go and run this entire thing um, If I if I could probably oh, okay, so it's just uh, doing this its own thing uh, So when I go to the vertices uh, I'll go to the vertices and I try to hot reload with uh, an error It becomes red which is probably too bright. We probably want to tune it down uh, slightly so it's not as bright uh, But uh, that's a pretty good indication of an error, right? Um, if you know what I mean. It's a good indication of an error. Um, so, yes. And essentially, when you see this kind of error, you have to go to the compilation mode and look for, for, the, for the logs, right? So, usually uh, print it in the logs what's exactly went wrong. And it's going to be the same for the... <clears throat> for the textures. Uh, all right. So, we might as well also... I'm, I'm in a shader define the hot reload error color something like that define hot uh, reload error color and the question is how we're going to define it i guess we can define it as unpacking macro right it's going to be uh, like this uh, because we'll have to post it into gl clear color uh, and it's going to be like this oh this is a, like a black one and uh, we'll have to do it like this hot uh, reload error color so clear color hot reload error color uh, <clears throat> so and then we can also have some sort of like a background color 
right background color uh, and let's go here uh, color define uh, background color and it's gonna be just the same as that the same as that but uh, it's gonna be completely black and also completely transparent to you guys I just want to be completely transparent with you guys okay no more no less mm, all right <clears throat> announcement exactly what's up Drixie on 60 welcome to the stream what's up what's up what's up maybe 40 characters is it too big of a limit but maybe I don't know you're clearly a pig <laughs> Ah, I'm sorry. <clears throat> mm. Hot uh, reload error color. Boom, boom, boom. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so then we bind the texture and we do the rest of the stuff. What's interesting is that um, we should not forget to, we should not forget to um, free the memory allocated by STB because STB allocates memory, and we don't want our memory to leak. Right? We don't want to leak any memory. Uh, even though memory is cheap, we we're gonna leak a memory every time we hot reload, which is not bueno, in my opinion. In my personal opinion right which doesn't matter by the way so uh let's see how do you you're supposed to clean everything i think it's something stbi free yeah, yeah, yeah so you have to call something uh i don't quite remember what you have to call but uh stbi um load oh yeah stbi image free let it leak let it leak let it leak oh, let it leak Memory costs nothing, let it leave. All right, so essentially we set like the color of hot reloading to be uh, red, then program uh, failed. Maybe we should rename it to hot reload failed. <clears throat> and uh, then we free the image, then we free the image. Uh, and we also need to free the image uh, afterwards as well, and unfortunately we don't have a defer, which would be kind of cool if we had, but yeah. You know what I mean? Something like defer, like just take this entire thing, right, and uh, defer. Just defer it. Uh, oh yeah, that's true. You're, you're right, so I don't need to free anything here, <laughs> yeah, because there are no... Uh, it probably does not allocate anything. Oh shit, yeah. My brain thought that... Yeah, my brain thought about a different thing. I have a problem focusing today. Mm. Alright, so that makes sense to free it somewhere here. That's that's true. That's 100% true. Um... Mm -hmm. Um... Calling free, but this is not free. That's the thing. We're not calling free from standard C library. We're calling STBI image free. Who knows? God knows what does. Right. So we, we can look into the source code, but I mean, come on, it's not free. So the problem, it might do some additional stuff and it might not expect uh, this to be something, but maybe not, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, then we regenerate everything. And I suppose before, yeah do i delete the program do i ever delete the program gl delete uh, program yeah i guess i recreate the program every time which is kind of interesting so aren't you supposed to delete the program um i think you're supposed to delete the program mm. Yeah, and I never do that. Mm. I only do the, sh the shaders. Uh, all right. <clears throat> 
so I need to check if what I do is safe. Right, so I'm gonna actually stash everything we have and I'm gonna recompile everything in here. All right, I'm gonna recompile everything. All right, so... And now, um, I'm going to... Delete the program. Jill, delete program. Uh, program. So first we're deleting the program. Um, then we're reloading the program and everything. Okay. Uh, so let's just let's just try to run it. Let's just try to run it. And if I try to do something like this, all right. So, um, for example, uh, we can decrease the distance it travels, right? So it doesn't fail that much, right? It doesn't fail that much. But and also, what if we introduce a, a compilation error and then fix the compilation error? It's still working. Uh, it's still working. <clears throat> uh, so that means I should uh, delete this program and also should delete the texture. By the way, um, let me read about what GL uh, delete program even does. What does it even do? Uh, freeze the memory and invalidates the name associated with the program object specified by program. This uh, uh, command if effectively undoes the effect of call to create program. If a program object is in use as part of the current rendering state, it will be flagged for deletion, but it will not be deleted until it is no longer part of the current state for any uh, rendering context. If a program uh, object to be deleted uh, has shader object attached to it, the shader subjects will be automatically detached, but not deleted unless they have already been flagged for deletion and so on and so forth. Okay, that makes sense. What about GL texture? GL delete texture. Gl delete texture. Mm -mm. It doesn't matter, people. It doesn't fucking matter. Uh, bike shading. Why did I fucking in endorse this bike shading? It doesn't matter what it does. It's not important for what we're doing. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so delete uh, and nobody gives a shit about what i'm doing right now everyone is just whether it calls freeze or not oh my god whether it calls freeze or not. it doesn't matter knowing whether it frees uh, calls the free or not doesn't make us closer to the goal at all <laughs> mm. holy shit okay um i need, I need a cup of tea should have ignored you. exactly like why do i even fucking read the chat why is that even fucking matter? Does anyone have any questions while I'm making a cup of tea? Texture to this schedule, select the DM upload. Uh, it's better wait for upload to complete with uh, fence sync before free. Ah, so it's probably uh, in case for like a very long, uh, very big textures, right? Uh, fence sync starting from GL3, which uh, we probably don't use. Even. Um, so create a new sync object that inserts it into gel command stream, uh, specifies the condition that might be met. Mm. It's better to wait. Uh, what if I don't wait? What's going to happen? What if I don't wait until it's uh, fully uploaded to GPU? What's going to happen? My computer will catch on fire 
or what? I, I don't understand. So, what exactly is gonna happen? Uh, I don't think it, something bad will happen. Mm -mm. So, I would presume that for like maybe a second, things won't have textures, right? Is that what's gonna happen? But then, once it finish uploading, everything should be okay, right? So it's gonna be like a brief moment, uh, brief moment, uh, you know, something is not gonna work or what I don't know. So my point is, web people are okay with a flash of unstyled text. <laughs> so. I think it's always safe, but the driver may have to be to do double copy on write in system RAM. You could get a few dropped frames. So, yeah, on an operation, on an operation that I do really rarely and manually by pressing a key. So, sounds like non-existing problem to me. All right. So let me go and uh, turn on the kettle and I'm going to be back. Don't forget to post your cock. So, nobody posted a cock. Uh, I'm disappointed. <clears throat> mm, I'm very, very disappointed. Uh, oh, people are posting cock. Nice. Thank you for posting cock. Uh, <laughs> All right. Two, 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 two. Who else wants to post cock? I'm trying to find where I'm doing hot reload. <laughs> uh, all right, there we go. So uh, my tea is ready, by the way. Tea is ready. of cocks <laughs> nice one <clears throat> all right so I, I think I need to go back so I need to not forget to delete the program uh, let's not forget to delete the program and let's go back in here <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, gel um, delete program. And it's going to be just a program. Right. It's going to be just a program. Do I have a texture? Yeah, here is the texture ID. And we should not forget to delete uh, texture. Right. So it's going to be texture ID. All right. So here is the texture ID. Um, cool. 
So we reload everything, then uh, if something fails, we do that. Then we prepare the texture, generate meat maps. Meat map, meat map, meat map, meat map, meat map. Successfully reloaded. Um, <clears throat> um, successfully hot reloaded. Let's put it this way hot reloaded, hot reloaded shaders and. Uh, shaders and uh, textures. There we go. So this is what we're doing. We're hot reloading shaders and textures. Uh, do we need to do anything else? That's a good question. We might as well actually delete the texture after we reload it. Uh, complete, like successfully reloaded the program, but I'm not 100% sure if it's a good idea generally. Right, so here it is. Uh, now when I call reload shaders, so I call reload shaders here, and there's another place where I call them, uh, right, so when I press F5, so that should work fine, uh, so here's the texture, so I also need to somehow, uh, say, use that texture, or use that texture, there should be some sort of, like, a configuration file, right, some sort of configuration file that I can use, um to um to specify what texture to load so maybe it could be done with the obg thingy right with the obg thingy because i think obg can refer to external textures and whatnot but i'm not 100 sure can it refer to tech to external textures maybe uh maybe it cannot but it would be kind of cool to have something like how to do that like a scene conf right and uh, you can have a texture uh texture and you can provide like a path to a texture like pork png right and then you also can comment out things and then you can have yep png and so on and so forth uh so obg has a multi uh, mtl files if so these are like material files and material files can refer to uh, textures right so obg mtl files <clears throat> material files so i, I want to see what they're capable of uh so material color texture map uh all right so something about textures not sure not sure what they mean by texture map texture map statement can it refer to so there's some sort of like other files this is really complicated <gasps> i guess i'm gonna yeah we're probably not going to support the whole obg uh we're going to support like a subset of obg um a subset of obg um very small one that is easy to implement uh i got a warning when i entered the stream yes that's kind of the point this is a very dangerous stream be careful okay be very careful when you join the stream Mm. Alrighty. Um yes, 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 yes. Mm, don't program C at home. Well yeah. C is in fact a pretty dangerous language. Um <clears throat> Cool. Um, so this is going to be like a scene uh, conf. <sighs> I'm going to fucking swear in here. Is that why it is? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, I marked the stream as a mature, uh, a mature stream. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Nothing much to say. Um, okay. So we need to know what to load, right? Define texture file path. Yeah, yeah, so we need to be able to get that texture file path from somewhere. Right, we need to be able to get it from somewhere. So the question is, where are we going to get it from? Mm -mm. Oh, by the way, we can even go further and um, do something like, uh, like this. Fragment equal main uh, frag and... Uh, vertex uh vert right uh frag shader 
vert shader. So we can have this kind of configuration, right? So the hot reloading will first load this configuration, parse it, right? Extract what files uh, you want in here uh, and use them. And at any point you can even redirect to different... I think I already done that before. <laughs> I I, th I think I've really done that in Haskell, right? Um, yeah. Mm, you can just overwrite. But what if it has a different size? Uh, right. So if you use a pair of textures from the back buffer fast enough to stream video too. Uh, for example, if uh, I pre-located small texture and then I load a big one. So would sub image extend the size of the texture? That's a good question. Uh, so there was something Haskick, uh, OpenGL Haskick. So is there like uh, a Rust for OBG? What? A Rust for OBG that makes models and animations perfect with Borrow Checker. What? Uh, I don't think you understand what Borrow Checker actually means. <clears throat> you can make the texture uh, a sufficiently large power of two, then pass. Uh, I think it's just easier to recreate it. Uh, in terms of the implementation, I already just have a code that I can copy paste to a different place and have it being implemented. So I think it's. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it makes sense to optimize things right now. King Slayer, thank you so much for 19 months. Avae Vae. of tier 1 subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic Avae Vae club. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much. Mm. All right, so, yeah, Haskell. So, I worked on. Yeah, it's, it was called Pipeline. Yeah, exactly. I actually did that before. Like, I'm coming up with this idea, and I feel like, like a strong feeling of deja vu, right? I don't know, I'm not sure if I pronounced it correctly, but yeah. So, I already implemented that before, but for Haskell. So, yeah, now I'm re-implementing the same shit for C, but that would be actually kind of cool. I think, and then uh, I can do something like mesh, and it's gonna be mesh uh, OBG, right? So, and uh, yeah, so I think it's a, it's a good idea generally. I think it's a good idea. And we already have uh, a function that can lo like slurp up the whole file. Um, right, it can slurp up the whole file and then we can parse it. Mm, deja vu. I've seen this code. It, syllables don't... You could have at least spend a little bit more time to sync it up with syllables. Oh my god. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Uh, anyways, I'm just joking, of course. Um, but I don't have my SV library for, for parsing shit. I don't have my SV library. Um, after some time it will... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can I can imagine that it will become... Yeah, Provot is actually way more experienced like OpenGL developer. And, uh, well, it's it's not that bad, I guess. It's not that bad. I mean, I've seen more complicated shit. By, by the way, the other day, the other day I was watching uh, One Life's Left stream. Uh, and he was working on a Steam, like, wrapper library for Jai. And he was, like, editing huge YAML config or something. And I didn't know what exactly he's doing. But I would assume it's something related to Steam library. <laughs> that YAML config was so goddamn fucking enormous. And it's like, I couldn't understand what the fuck is going on. Is that like how you work with Steam library or something? Like, holy shit. <laughs> uh, John Blow cut him off from beta when he saw YAML. Is that a joke or what? I, I don't understand. Uh, really? He cut him off? Um, that's a really strange reason to cut people off. Um, I'm pretty sure you're joking. Mm. Oh, it was a joke. Okay, so. <laughs> um, all right. <sighs> mm. 
Sta mieska. Warp bait, holy shit! Why Promet is so goddamn fucking good with names? I see. It's a, it's a workbench. In Russian it means workbench and it's a workbench for OpenGL. And it's actually a very good Slavic word because for foreigners it's actually relatively easy to read. Holy shit. I really like that. And then of course Panapudi made a, like a spin-off of this uh, of this thing called Pilka. Uh, it's Chisel. Wait. Oh shit. Well, yet another confirmation that I don't speak neither English nor Russian, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Uh, I don't speak none of the languages, okay? So... <laughs> uh, Alright. So, I need a s string library to, to parse shit. Western spy. Yeah, fake Russian. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, a f I'm actually fake Russian. Um... Easy, 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 easy. Uh, and it's okay, whatever. Um, so what we're gonna what we're gonna do? We need to steal some string library, okay? We need to steal some string libraries. Um, Putin is already reworking you. <laughs> you think it's that easy to lose Russian citizenship? Putin doesn't let people go that easily, trust me. <laughs> ah. If you became a Russian citizen, you can't escape. So it's the other way around. <clears throat> um, all right, so let me go to BM. And let's grab ourselves some string library. Wait. Did I already... Okay, here's an interesting thing. Oh, shit. I already took string library from BM and put it into my other project. I cannot take it twice. I Instead of copy-pasting it, I actually moved it. So now, now that's why it appears deleted. So... <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh... I don't know how that happened, but I actually did. Alright, so let me go here and I'm gonna copy paste it. So, so, so now we, have, we, oh, we have a SV. Right, we have a SV. Uh, I'm gonna go to the make file and. What am I building? So th this is src and we're also gonna have sv.c. Uh, yep, PNG. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and do we have any arena or something like that? I don't think so. So we just have this thing. Mm, Goes making some food. Yeah, some food would be nice. Uh, yeah, anyway. So we have a string library that uh, lets us parse things easily and we're gonna use that to parse the uh, config and whatnot, right? We're gonna use that to parse the config. Do we have to... well... Uh... Yeah, we'll have to do it like this. So we're gonna reload the shaders and the first thing we're gonna do... Uh, the first thing we're gonna do... Um, so we slurp in the file, right? So when we slurp in the file, uh, we're actually panicking. Oh shit, this actually makes sense. So now we need to be able to recover. Uh, we need to be able to recover from slurpage failure. That's how I'm gonna call it. We should be able to recover from slurpage failure. So maybe because of that, uh, we're going to return this like this content and well i mean you can always return uh yeah return null in case of a slurpage failure right so but that will require doing things like that um slurpage failure so if you fail to open a file uh we can just return null right just, just return null 
So if you couldn't seek things, uh, we have to return uh, true, but we also have to close the file. I think this is the perfect place for go to's, right? I think it's a perfect place for go to and whatnot. And the way we're gonna do that, by the way, um, I'm gonna move this thing to the top, right? So all of the function definitions are gonna be at the top, um, right? And well, not all of them, but uh, the ones that we will require um, deallocating the memory, right? The ones will require deallocating the memory. So this is going to be null, and uh, here we're going to just uh, do that. So, and at the bottom, at the bottom, we're going to have something like error, right? Uh, something like error, and if file is um, not zero, not null, we have to close the file, right? And if buffer, uh, we have to free the buffer, right? Free the buffer, and then we have to return null. Uh, yep. So that's essentially what we're doing here. Uh, now, interestingly enough, uh, am I shadow banned, lol? Yes, you are shadow banned. Um, okay, uh, I already explained. Uh, maybe we have to uh, add a command for that, uh, but, but maybe people will explain it. Yeah, you, you cannot post more than 40 characters. Well, I mean, you can, but it's not gonna be visible on the stream, but I still can read it uh, in, in my other uh, window, but it has less priority. Uh, that way. So I'm sorry that I had to put these moderation measures. They are really necessary. Um, as the channel grows, we have we get more and more weird people that spam weird shit. And since I'm a partner, I need to moderate my channel and I need to moderate my content. So it is what it is. But by the way, if you're a subscriber, this limitation does not apply, right? So if you subscribe. Uh, it, no matter how long your message is, it will be uh, shown on the on the stream. Uh, we need to add command to quickly send this information about 40 characters. I already suggested that, but okay. Uh, shadow ban. Um, you, uh, if you are not a sub, uh, any of your messages longer than 40 charts will not be displayed on the stream okay if you're not a sub uh, any of your messages longer than 40 characters will not be displayed on the stream all right it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't sorry uh so if we couldn't do that um <clears throat> Mm, for new there is a message pop up 40 characters is not a twitch limitation holy shit oh my god it's a limitation in my chat arena on the screen it's a limitation like that i put to show on the screen holy shit All right, so uh, to error, go to error, and uh, so if something like this happened, we're also gonna do go to error, and this thing, um, yeah, will automatically deallocate everything. So this is a perfect usage of go to, um, yeah. Please tell me how I'm wrong and I'm a disgrace to the uh, programmer community for using go to go ahead tell me mm, yeah. so this is gonna be go to error so this is the buffer i'm not even sure if failed close makes that much sense because at that point we kind of read where we want it so yeah so i don't think it makes sense to actually check whether this particular close has failed like it just doesn't make much sense uh you just close it and that's it right so here's that if that thing failed we uh, say that it's failed if that failed we just uh, you know, go to fail uh -huh, uh -huh. 
So yeah, go to is actually perfect for this kind of thing. Uh, correction, you are disgraced to certain programming communities. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, hello, Koshe, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome to the stream. Mm, 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 mm. Um, please. So, I'm just thinking. So that looks okay. So now, when we're slurping the file, by the way, uh, in some particular places we have to say that we um, couldn't slurp it. Oh yeah, compile, um, oh my god, All right. slurp file, so here is the source, but here we also need to check uh, whether we manage to read anything. So if source is null, uh, we have to return false, I suppose, indicating that we couldn't reload the shader for whatever goddamn reason, right, for whatever goddamn reason. <laughs> Mm, well, we know that compiler shader actually prints the error on the screen, so maybe we can also print it here as well. So this is going to be something like this. std error, uh, error, um, um, could not uh, slurp, slurp the file, and we can provide a thing like this. We could, couldn't slurp the file. Uh, because of the following reason, because of the following reason. So the file is a file path and the reason is str error, uh, error null. Right? So this is basically what we do and then we return false after that. Uh, yep. And that looks okay. Certainly, certainly looks okay. Where do we use slurp file? Uh, that's it. So that was the only usage of a slurp file. So we also have panic error no that is not used anymore. So I'm super happy to finally get rid of it. So it's not needed anymore. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Slurp file. Hello, move AX 13H. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mm, slurping the file. <laughs> cool. So we slurp that. But at some point we'll also have to slurp like... Um, files, the file names of which are string views. The file names of which are string views. Um, I'm, really, I'm really sorry, something... I, I need to make a small break. Whew. Um, like like two minutes. Something is really strange with me today. Um, so I really apologize. All right, let's make a small break. You guys have fun. Yo, what's up? 
Welcome back. How's it going, everyone? How's it going? How's it going? Okay. So, um, now, uh, we slurp in the file. So, here's the source. There's too much... <clears throat> so, the, um, the data that we're slurping, right? The data that we're slurping. Um, how much of that data is needed after we hot reload it? So we need to load uh, configuration. Within configuration, we need to load shaders. And within the shaders, like we need to load textures. And all of the data that we loaded up is not really needed anymore. Is not really needed anymore after we uh, like protest everything. So maybe we're going to just use the arena, um, right? And we're going to clean up the, uh, this arena after we hot reloaded everything. So we're going to just basically keep allocating things um until we processed everything and then we're gonna sweep out everything like uh immediately i think that's a good idea generally but i didn't think like introducing a whole arena for that would be really necessary um especially considering that in stb in integrating our arena that we use all the time in stb is gonna be kind of a pain in the ass so the only thing that you can integrate is uh, things that act exactly as malloc. Our arena doesn't act exactly as malloc. Uh, maybe it can if we make the arena global variable. Yeah, maybe it can if we make the arena global variable. So that could be okay. All right. So yeah, you, you have to define three of these things like stb free uh to avoid using malloc realloc and free and the question is like how often does it call free though how often does it call free um let me see stb free image uh convert so yeah i suppose it allocates a bunch of memory and then frees it afterward if we're gonna use arena we can just um <clears throat> We can just redirect free to nothing. This is a very interesting question. How many times STB calls malloc and how many times it calls free? This is a very interesting question. Let's actually try to uh, explore that. Let's try to explore that. Um, so STB test, right, it's gonna be C. Uh, and we're gonna define STB image implementation, right? So it's gonna we're gonna define this thing like that. Mm, so and uh, we're gonna include uh, stb image dot h, uh, and here is the thing we are trying to do. So this is gonna be stb i load. Uh, maybe I'm gonna go here. So stb i uh, load. Let me do it like that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be loading the data. If uh, data, uh, we're going to throw an error of some sort, f printf, std error, uh, std error, error. Could not load file s because of that shit. Uh, it's going to be file, uh, file name. Uh, we also need to define the file name somehow. So here's the file name. It's going to be something like pog.png. Uh, rep or pop png uh, so we're loading everything and then we're exiting with one there we go um, now if we loaded everything successfully right if we loaded everything successfully uh, we're gonna provide the width and height so it's gonna be x and this is gonna be y and that's pretty much it so let's try to compile this entire thing uh, stb test.c is it gonna work is it gonna work now no we need to also link it with m yes so now if i try to run it it loaded everything successfully it provided the sizes okay so the thing i want to do now the thing i want to do now is uh redefine malloc so it's going to be stb malloc stb malloc stbi malloc uh yeah so you can define a serve before and you can define reloc to avoid using uh, a realloc. So I think you have to redefine all of them. You have to redefine all of them. And our allocator does not support reallocation, which is kind of sad 
but maybe a reallocation is going to be just allocating new buffer essentially and copying everything there uh all right so here is the things that we need to define we need to define uh stb malloc um, then we need to define stb free and uh, we need to define stb realloc uh, so malloc will accept the size and the thing i want to do here essentially is just log um what functions are called there um so let's let's quickly do that uh, so this is gonna be that uh this is gonna be that and in here is gonna be print f um is to be a uh, malloc d maybe it's, it has to be like z u uh and we're gonna provide the s oh shit yeah you have to use the sequential operator instead of do yeah because um reasons yeah uh because you, you're supposed to return some value in there right so this is gonna be malloc and we provide the size hopefully that will work i'm not sure but i really hope it will work uh yeah so just basically log something there uh free uh we're gonna provide a pointer uh right so here's the free has to be uh free we might as well print that pointer because why not uh right and the reallocation accepts i forgot what it accepts i think it accepts the pointer uh and then it accepts this the new size uh print f what's up how are we doing <clears throat> um stbi realloc uh and this has to have a size and a pointer if i remember correctly uh re a lock <clears throat> re first is the pointer and then the size okay so this is gonna be the pointer and this is gonna be the size uh now here's the pointer here's this thing and there we go there we go uh yes 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 realloc ptrs <clears throat> ptrs mm -hmm. so uh let's see what's gonna happen let's see what's gonna happen so if i try to <clears throat> recompile it and run it all right so what did it, what did it do it actually called realloc would you look at that so it allocated 18 kilobytes then freed something it would be kind of nice to also um f oh my god damn it all right um uh, <clears throat> so let me see it also would be kind of nice to print the outcome somehow. Um, don't debate me like that. This is a bannable debate, by the way. Um, uh, so how can we do that? Like, I need to define uh, this thing. Uh, so I'm pretty sure you cannot just do it like that, right? So... Uh, I'm pretty sure you cannot do it like that. Like, because in that case, C would be too nice of a language. Uh, too nice of a language. Mm. And of course, you cannot do that because. Oh, I mean, I have to be void star then. <sighs> Is there any, even a way to do that? Because uh, the, the only thing I want to do here is just like print it or something. I guess the only way to do that is literally to introduce a function for that. Uh, okay, I mean, why not? Uh, so it's gonna be uh, traced malloc. Uh, size. <clears throat> so it's voice star pointer malloc s all right um stbi malloc 
uh, size is zu. Uh, this is a pointer, and here's the size, here's the pointer. All right, it's just like too much to type, in my opinion. Um, so do I need to do anything else? Maybe for real lock, I could also do something like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's actually implement uh, the versions for all of them. So it's going to be traced free. Um, and will it will accept the pointer. Right. So in that case, it's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, STBI free uh, P uh, pointer. It's going to be, I forgot. This thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is STBA free. Uh, and another thing is going to be traced real lock. Hello, Lavrush Kalaev. Uh, I would really recommend you to speak English because this is an English speaking stream, so nobody understands Russian here. I'm sorry. All right, so here we're going to accept the pointer, All right? We're going to accept the pointer and we're going to accept the new size. Uh, all right, so in here is going to be new PTR and it's going to be something like realloc. Uh, and this is going to be the old PTR and this is a new size, All right? So and in here we're going to lock the following thing. STBI realloc, uh, new pointer, uh, then the size uh, and then it's going to be p there we go so this is the old pointer size new pointer there we go mm, all right all right all right all right so let's put it this way um uh, and let's return the new pointer mm. Mm. Every nyan. Who's every nyan? Everyone. Oh, I see. Uh, all right. Hello, sir. Moon, what's up? What's up? What's up? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, so here's the malloc. It's going to be traced. I mean, I can actually probably do it like this. So it's going to be traced malloc. Uh, traced malloc, traced free, and traced uh, realloc. So we can uh, clearly see what the fuck is going on. Mm, all right, so here's the size, unknown type. Okay, so we'll have to include stdio, stdlib at least, I think. Uh, what else do we have here? So this s, yeah, it's called size. It's called size, and uh, this is not how you type the size. Uh, printf also requires this thing, studio. Trace the free, yeah, thank you. Uh, let's do free pointer. There we go. Uh, and okay, so this is also has to be called the size. Uh, yep. Uh, what do we have? Mm. Wait a goddamn second. Did I fuck up? Mm. Eh. This is kind of interesting. Mm. I mean, we can, yeah, essentially, if we're gonna have like a linear allocator, right? We're gonna have a linear allocator into which uh, we are um, putting everything. Uh, we can re-implement uh, re the reallocation as allocating new memory and copying old data to the new memory, right? Because we're gonna clean that up uh, uh, like at the end of the uh, hot reloading session anyway. Right, we're gonna clean that up anyway, so whatever. Um, yeah, I think I think that's okay. That's totally okay. Mm, how big of a how big of a uh, thing we wanna allocate? That's a good question. 
Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, why this f print? Uh, why this free print new? Because the library is trying to free um, new. Yes, it is valid. Look, I'm gonna show you something cool. Uh, STB uh, test. Look, look, look. At the beginning of the program, I'm gonna do free null. And I'm gonna just exit with zero. So th this is everything the program does. So after free null, it will exit. Uh, and then we're gonna try to run it. It exited successfully. It just exited successfully. You can free null pointer and nothing is gonna happen. And this is defined behavior. Who knows why, by the way? Who knows why? Mm. I have a hypothesis why uh, it is like that. Uh, there is an if in free uh, to check. Well, I mean, why they added that uh, that check in the first place? Um, I guess there is no need to check after malloc it returned. Yeah, this is one of the reasons. I think there is another interesting reason is that um, you can treat um, something like a null pointer uh, as an empty collection. You can treat this as an empty collection. So then you want to extend the size of this collection uh, like this. You extended the size of this collection like this. And then you freeing up the collection like this. So if you never actually allocated anything throughout like some sort of a cycle, right? Uh, you don't have to have like a special case uh, for not free the null pointer. So you can just view null pointer as an empty collection and reallocation as pushing into the empty collection. Um, so yeah, so it's it's like less special cases, I think. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty much the same uh, the same case as with checking malloc or not checking malloc. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, just a convenience feature. Okay, it's like makes sense, uh, like a special case for, for that. All right. <clears throat> um, let me think. Let me think. So what I want to do, I want to implement a very simple allocator, right? So I don't have to do like free, uh, free, and everything. What the fuck am I doing? Um, so essentially, we're gonna have just a buffer, right? So we're gonna just have a buffer. Um, mm -hmm. So memory, we're literally gonna call it memory. And we're gonna also define something like memory capacity. So how much memory we wanna preallocate? How much memory we wanna preallocate? So this is a one kilobyte. This is a one megabyte. Is 69 megabyte enough? Uh, for us 69 megabyte. I think 69 megabyte is enough for us So here's the thing now we're gonna implement our own malloc Right, so let's let's call it something like memory malloc oh. uh, So it's gonna be just size and uh, there we go uh, da -da -da -da. Um uh, Refeed, do you know the difference between kilobytes and kibibytes? Kilobytes, kibibytes. Um, I'm, I suppose that you can actually search for specifically kibibytes. Yeah. So kibibytes is 100, uh, 1024, but kilobytes is 1000. So there is like a difference between them. So if I, uh, I specifically said kilobytes and kilobytes is 1000. What you're trying to say here is kibibytes actually. 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 Uh, anyways. All right. So if uh, to, 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 it's gonna be size and memory size. Mm. Uh, 
to, 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 I, I think I'm gonna ignore or start ignoring Russian messages. Alright. So if uh, memory size plus size is greater or equal to memory capacity, uh, memory capacity, right? We're gonna just return null, right? That means we ran out of memory. Uh, can we actually set uh, the memory error no to out of memory? I think we can. So we're gonna set error no. Uh, how how do you do that, by the way? So let's take a look at man malloc malloc uh, error no error no. Eno mem. Okay. No memes, please. So this is what we're going to put here. No mem. Gibby bite. <laughs> Gibby bite. <laughs> Gibby bites, please. Um, mm, mm. Uh, so, and if we do have enough shit, our result is going to be memory plus memory size. So basically, we take. Uh, at the end of the allocated memory and this is going to be the result and after that we're going to do memory size uh, plus size and we just get the return result so essentially memory malloc allocates the required amount of bytes within this huge array we allocated array of 69 megabytes right so we like uh, in a static memory we have 69 megabytes we also want to actually zero initialize it so it goes into bss section that doesn't take up uh, space in the elf right so and memory malloc essentially just allocates size amount of bytes within that array and it actually appends it at the end of the array until we ran out of space right so um freeing in such uh, in such a locator in such a simple allocator is not allowed uh right but here's the thing we can try to do we can try to reallocate uh reallocate uh, some stuff Oh shit, reallocation is going to be kind of hard because you also need to keep track of the size of these things. Hmm. All right. So we have to provide like a new size. Oh shit. Yeah. Like even reallocation is going to be pain in the ass. Um. Hmm. Oh, that actually helped. Oh fuck, this is... Oh my god, nothing is so smart. Oh my god. This is exactly what... I... Like, it's literally exactly what I needed and it does exist. This is so goddamn fucking... Oh my god. Holy shit. Yes, you helped. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because, like, I was thinking... Yeah, nah, do I really have to keep track of the size myself? No. Oh my god, I now have even more respect towards the author of this library, like, holy shit, this person knows his shit. He fucking knows his shit, it's just, it's such a good fucking library. Oh my god. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I mean, if the message is not visible, I still can see messages, so don't worry about it. Um, because... Uh, is this oh you you just joined by the way shadow shadow ban yeah so essentially now we have these kind of limitations so if you're not trusted or like if you're not sub or vip and you have long messages it's not going to be displayed right but i still can see it because i have a second uh, chat here without the um, without the filter um all right, so that's basically the thing here. So we're gonna use this to be a realloc sized. Uh, so realloc is gonna accept uh, the pointer, right? So this is gonna be the pointer, and then we're gonna have an old size, old size and uh, new size. No. Uh, I did ban. Yes, you did. Uh, you did ban. I don't know who you banned, but anyway. So we're gonna have a new memory. Uh, a new memory and we're gonna literally allocate like a new memory here so it's gonna be malloc new size and after that i'm gonna mem copy new memory right new memory then um let's call it old memory old memory uh old memory 
old size. Old memory, old size. Right, and then I just return new memory. There we go. So now we have a reallocation. Um, now we have a reallocation. And that's it. We implemented our own very simple allocator, um, which just lets us leak. It let us, lets us leak. So and this is how we're going to do that. So it's going to be stdi uh, malloc, and we're going to just redirect it to uh, memory malloc. Memory malloc. So then uh, it's going to be stbi free, right? And uh, we're not going to put anything here. So if you try to free something, it's literally not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything. But maybe uh, it has to be some sort of a, like a statement, and that's why I'm going to just put here, right? Because if I don't, um, yeah, if I don't return anything, I think it's going to be like it's going to generate invalid code. We, we're going to we have to make it a statement. Right, uh, and uh, let's define some other things. Um, STBI uh, realloc sized, and it's going to be memory uh, realloc. And let me see if the arguments are the same. Uh, and I think we'll have to define this entire memory extravaganza. Um, before we even include STB. Yeah, it has to be actually defined here, otherwise it won't be able to use that, unfortunately. And yeah, bot can actually spam shit. Bot can actually spam shit. Uh, now, uh, here, when we're trying to malloc something, we have to use memory malloc. Uh, right, so it's going to be a memory malloc. Here we go. Do we have any other mallocs? I don't think so. I guess that's... Uh, yeah, so this is reallocation, uh, memory malloc, and everything looks okay. So now we don't have to even free shit. That's, what, that's what's cool about it. You don't have to free shit. Well, we only have to not forget to close the files and whatnot, so... Um, you have to not forget to close the files, but in this particular case, we can get rid of the go to, I think. Uh, well, we, we won't be able to go to, but we can simplify this thing. And, right, so this is going to be the end. Uh, right, and I can just put it like that. So, uh, in here, we're going to query replace error with end. Uh, yeah. And. We have to do that only if this thing is not null. Uh, all right, so that's pretty cool. So here's the memory malloc, everything is okay. So do we have any other freeze? Yeah, that's cool. Now you don't have to free anything in here. You just don't have to free anything. Just forget about freeing anything. Uh, you don't have to free the image either. Just, just forget about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the idea. We have our own allocator and we never free anything. We just let it like allocate as much as you want. Just fucking let it leak. And all of the memory allocations, by the way, uh, happen uh, within this reload shaders, right? So, um, and what's cool is that uh, after you allocated the memory, so the amount of memory you allocated is gonna be equal to memory, uh, to memory size, right? So, yeah. So it's going to be equal to memory size, because every time we allocate the memory, we increase this variable and basically it indicates how much memory within that array we allocated, right? So, and to clean up all of that memory, we just have to set memory size to zero, which means that memory alloc will start allocating memory from the beginning again, overriding the old garbage. You see? So that's basically what we're doing. We just pre-allocate 69 megabytes and we just let everyone allocate within that array. And then after we're done reloading files, reloading shaders, reloading textures, we just sweep it out in one, in one go. And it almost feels like using garbage collector. That's what's cool about this kind of way of allocating. Right, so basically you have a section of the code that just keeps allocating shit. Just, just let it allocate. Don't think about, oh, I have to not forget to allocate, deallocate that in case of an error, or I have to not forget to free that. Just let it fucking leak. At the end of this session, at the end of this kind of stuff, you just go deallocate all of that. 
in one go super fucking fast and super fucking easy uh i really love it i really love this approach it just makes uh like handling all of that uh, stuff so much easier uh right so yeah essentially um let me see uh reload shaders right uh you we reload the shaders and after we reload the shaders memory size zero there we go reloading the shaders will uh Load the files, allocate the memory, load the textures, and whatever. And all of that is going to be located inside of the memory size. Uh, and after we reload it, we're going to just set it to zero. Uh, and then reload shaders, like somewhere here, is going to be memory uh, memory size equal zero. There we go. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, but you have to be a little bit careful, you know, you have to know precisely the lifetime of your objects that you put in, in your, like, memory regions, right? So, yeah, the lifetime of those objects is the reloading time. We can even do something like this. Um, so, after we reloaded everything successfully, reloaded shaders and uh, textures. Uh, Memory is gonna be uh, Z out of ZU, uh, memory size, uh, memory capacity. So after we reloaded everything, we can even tell the user how much memory uh, like we consume during the process. Mm. I remember someone bashing me fucking up five times with three. I'm so sorry, I'm really sorry. Sometimes I do, do be emotional like that. You know that I love you. Um, and thank you so much for contributing to my projects. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, um, Alright. I, I can contribute uh, to your project, so you can bash me as well if you want. We can. <laughs> uh, so what? What is your current project? Let, let me contribute to it, so you can bash me on stream uh, for fucking shit up. And I'm gonna intentionally fuck shit up, by the way, <laughs> if you want me, of course. Uh, oh, what we write in C? Nice. Uh, so it's actually super easy because uh, fucking up shit in C is actually super easy. Um, expected semicolon, but got token. Oh, yeah, I see. So we have to actually be a little bit careful with this kind of thing. Um, so STBI free, STBI free. Oh, yeah, it has to be something like this. So we're going to just ignore this shit. Yeah. Uh, ignored. Mm, all right. So what do we have here? So retrieval and used parameter. And now it's going to complain about this shite. Oh, I have an idea. Void ignored. How about that? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool way to do that, I think. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, undeclared first use. Mm. So, that's really strange. Is that because... Oh, shit, I probably... Yeah, I probably have to specify these parameters anyway. Okay, so I'll have to do it like that then. Uh, hello, Superius. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I just realized that I sounded like fourth. <laughs> I, I didn't do that intentionally, but I, for some reason I, I really sounded like fourth. I'm really sorry. Uh, okay. Probably because I used Chitterina too much. Um, okay. Let me see, let me see. Uh, Realloc. Uh, Realloc sized. I wanted to do Realloc sized. Yeah, that's right. It's a pointer, new size. Okay, so it's gonna be pointer. Oh, old. I'm sorry, it's, it's okay. Uh, pointer. Uh, old. Uh, new so should be okay. 
uh, looks good to me. Um, oh shit! You guys remember we removed some variables because of the warnings? Well, turned out those variables that we removed from STB were not used only if you don't have STB realloc size defined. Oh shit! Does anyone remember that shit? By the way, every time, every time I copy pasted STB, it was uh, uh, spitting out warnings that you haven't used variables, and I was always removing them. Well, they are used if you define your custom realloc size. Ah! I didn't know that. Fuck! Fuck! This is such a, this is such a debate. Holy shit! Um, you tried to outsmart this to be. I, I guess I was. Hmm. I mean, it's not that. It's not something unfixable. We can just, you know, um, redownload it. But at least now I know. Now I know why we have the, those uh, those variables. Uh, because before, like, it wasn't clear. But, I mean, you could have actually coded it so if you don't have this thing defined, you don't define those var variables either, right? You don't define... Well, I mean, but uh, whatever. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So... Image resize. How did you make your voice hotter? A uh, what? Uh, I mean, I drank a lot of hot tea. Six hot teas every day. Uh... Anyway. <clears throat> Six hot teas. Mm. All right. So looks good. To... Ah, it didn't replace it. It didn't replace it. Does my voice sound hot? Yes, it does. All right. So, um, <clears throat> real voice, by the way, real voice. And it's working. It is twerking. Okay, that's cool. Uh, we have some comparison bullshit that we probably want to fix. Uh, so this one is going to be integer. Mm, so we have f and implicit declaration of the function did you mean f mod what how is that an implicit declaration of a function f and f error okay i actually query, like query replaced error with and oh, oh my god and to be fair if you think about it f and sounds like a function from POSIX. It does kind of sound like that. <clears throat> delete textures. We don't have a delete texture for some reason. The fuck? Uh, expected argument says t by the argument of type in. So I have to do it size t. <laughs> Texture <clears throat> It's actually texture s. Okay. <clears throat> so let let me go. Texture s, and we get a pointer, and we say one uh, delete one texture. Uh, so texture passing make integer from point uh, really ah it's the other way around okay so we almost compiled this shit by the way <laughs> trust me we actually compiled it finally holy shit that took so much time but we managed to compile it anyway uh alrighty are you guys ready for epic test um so let's just fucking run this shit yep it's working Yep. So that's essentially. So we essentially consume consume 175 kilobytes uh, to reload this shit, right? So that's actually pretty cool. And 
now I can try to test it. So I reload it. And it always consumes 175, uh, 63 kilobytes all the time. Which does make sense, I guess. So it also includes like all of the possible memory, including the um, the shaders and whatnot. So yeah, so this is a 69 megabyte. Um, two, two, two. So I want to now do something like this. This is going to be, yep, back. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the POG. Pop PNG and it's gonna be yep now. And if I hot reload, it also hot reloaded. So we can now hot reload the textures. And if you hot reload this texture, so this time it consumed less memory because the size of the image was uh, smaller. And it doesn't even leak any memory because we never allocate anything. If you try to uh, like Control S or Control F malloc, uh, we only use our own malloc, memory malloc. But we never call to the uh, standard C malloc, never, because we pre-allocated 69 megabytes and we're only using these 69 megabytes all the time, every time, right? So, and uh, every time you need to hot reload, we just sweep it out, everything from those 60, 69 buffer and reallocate everything there yet again. And we never have to think about like, not forgetting to free in case of an error, because it doesn't matter. At the end of the uh, hot reloading, we just free everything automatically. Um, so that's actually pretty cool. I really like this. Uh, two, 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 two. So, and it's very simple. So, but if we're gonna consume, so the only downside is that if you consume more than 69 megabytes during hot reloading, it's not gonna hot reload. So you'll have to maybe manually go and uh, extend the size of this uh, memory. But in our case, it doesn't really matter that much, right? So we can just pre-allocate a certain amount of memory and uh, yeah, just use it because it's just, you know, whatever, 69 megabytes. So as you can see, like a lot of people bash on C because they think you have to program in that really horrible style where you have to constantly think about allocation and deallocation. And if you make a mistake on error and you, you will forget to allocate something, it will uh, leak a ton of memory. Yes, it is a very horrible style of programming in C, but you don't have to program in that style, right? So you program in a different style where you have these, uh, you know, arenas and stuff like that. You, you can define, uh, you uh, divide your program into very specific lifetimes. And for each lifetime, you can have pre-allocated memory and it makes so, uh, things so much easier. But the problem is that since everyone thinks that you have to program in C in that horrible style, a lot of C libraries are written in that horrible style and they don't have a way for you to replace the way they manage memory like stb does stb is actually a good library it at least allows you to um replace the allocator it uses with your own allocator right and uh integrate it with your memory management system but a lot of libraries just do not they force a very specific uh, you know memory management style on you and there's nothing you can do about it uh, so, C++ is even worse in this regard, single objects everywhere, smart pointers. Yeah, but in C++, well, at least in STL, it allows you to specify your own allocator and stuff like that, but it doesn't really go really far, anyway. Um, all right, so... Yeah, I really love this style of program. It just makes, uh, like, it removes a lot of mental burden in terms of uh, memory management. It, ma it, it makes it feel like you're using garbage collector, which is just kind of cool. Uh, you, 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 you. Oh, you know what we can try to do? Uh, reload shaders. Right, reload shaders. Uh, we can, I think we can move memory cleanage to here. Yeah, so just set it like that. Memory size, and we have to don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, so we reload the shaders and it just uses that memory all the time. Okay. So here's the thing. What if we never clean the memory while reloading shit? Uh, so let's let's see what's gonna happen. What if we never clean the memory? Uh, Alright, so it loaded, and this is how much memory it consumed. 
and you try to reload again, it consumes even more memory because it keeps appending to that buffer. So, and as you can see, we're leaking memory. So we can do that until we actually ran out of 69 megabytes, right? Actually, as you can see, 69 megabytes is, is a lot of memory. Yeah, we only consumed like three, three megabytes. So to consume all of the 69 megabytes, you have to reload so many times. Actually, like 69 megabytes is already overkill for our case. I'm not clearing any memory and we are not running out of that memory. Hmm, that's very interesting. We can allocate like one megabyte and just see what's gonna happen if you overflow the memory. So 69, let's put one in here. So now we have one megabyte of pre-allocated buffer and let's see what's gonna happen. All right, so uh, overflow in one megabyte should be in, uh, pretty easy. Uh, I think, yeah, there we go. So it failed, but it didn't really f said, say where exactly it failed. Interesting. It didn't print any error. Hmm. Uh, so that's a, like a really bad situation, I think. Oh yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I forgot to actually print an error. Print F error. Uh, could not uh, could not load file <clears throat> texture file path. Uh, texture file path and it's gonna be what? Uh, it's gonna be what? Uh, S right and it's gonna be str error uh, error no. And it's gonna be new line. Hello UT61, welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh yes, 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 yes. If I try to restart it, is it gonna work? Okay, so let's see what's gonna happen. So at some point we're gonna run out of this memory and it will say, uh yeah, that's pretty cool. Cannot allocate memory. That's perfect. That's actually pretty cool. So and now <clears throat> reload shaders. Um we're gonna clean the memory every time on every deallocation reallocation I mean reload and uh, we probably won't ever run out of memory unless you probably you're gonna try to load a huge texture but texture that has to be very huge it has to fill up all the 69 megabytes <clears throat> it has to be very big mm. so you can also make this think extendable but not really anyway so that's actually pretty cool <clears throat> and it's really cool that you can uh, you know how to say that customize stb so it um, you know uses your allocator all right so i'm gonna make a cup of tea does anyone have any questions while making a cup of tea feel free to ask questions and also reading <coughs> the second chat where um you know Unfiltered one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, Lord of Verdoza. What's up? What's up? I feel a little bit under the weather today. It's kind of strange. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello, hello. Does anyone have any questions? At some point, all of us will get a bad case of panic attack due to this scary rotating thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it is really that scary? Is it really that scary? Um, I don't know if it's that scary. Um, the, black, the black background doesn't help. Yeah, I can see that. How do you approach solving problems that at first sight seem impossible? Um, I don't know. I don't solve them. So if I see a problem that seems impossible, I don't solve it. So, yeah. All right. 
I'm gonna go to the kitchen and turn on the kettle. And um, yeah, I guess you guys enjoy this view. It's, it's gonna be super quick. <laughs> Is that new of him? No, it's me, Patrick. Um, awesome loading screen. Thank you. Thank you so much. I worked on it for three days. I'm not that good of a developer, so that's why it took three days. <clears throat> so now we need to implement the uh, the scene configuration parsing and shit. Right. So this is what we need to implement. Uh, let me see. Let me see. So first we're going to do a reload shader and... Yeah, so we're gonna extract these things into uh, separate variables. Right. So const char and uh, vertex shader file path is gonna be main vert, right? And then we're gonna have a fragment, uh, fragment shader file path. Uh, there we go, vertex shader file path and fragment. Fragment shader file path. So this one is going to be texture file path. So I might as well actually go somewhere here, uh, right, and put it here. So const char texture file path. Yep, PNG. So and this is where we where we're going to parse the co uh, the config. Um, if we're not related with a really heavy Russian accent, it gets really funny. Rotate. Is that how we're supposed to do that? Rotate. Rotate. Is that? I don't know. Okay. Um, now, I think I did it correctly. Thank you so much. Uh, so this one has to be S. <laughs> Mm. Alright, so uh, my tea is ready, I'm gonna quickly go, and I'm gonna back. <clears throat> I mean, problems that occur while creating a program, let's say you have a problem in BM and you cannot find a way to solve it, but you know it's crucial to have that component working. Well, every time I encounter such problems, I quit programming forever and I become a McDonald's cashier. cashier. So every time I have unsolvable problem, I just quit programming altogether forever and never do it again. That's what I do every time I encounter such problems. And as you can see, I'm still programming. All right. So. <clears throat> now, what do we have here? Uh, so here's the pixels. Um, Mm-hmm. All right, seems to be compiled. Uh, now, we need to load the config. Um, yeah, it's going to be const char, uh, config, um, sin conf file path, and it's going to be literally just sin uh, conf, like this. And what we're going to do here is uh, sin conf 
buffer uh, slurp file sim uh, conf. And as you can see, we don't have to even worry about uh, deallocating this thing at all because we are allocating it within the memory buffer. So if sim conf uh, buffer is equal to null, uh, we can instantly. Oh, yeah, here's an interesting thing. How can we indicate an error? Yeah, first of all, we have to do it like this. Mm -mm -mm. Oh boy, oh boy. So we probably have to do it like that. So it's program failed false. Um, mm, and if it's equal, we're going to return gl clear caller hot uh, reload caller. Uh, program failed true and just return from this entire stuff there we go mm, after that we just need to um, do this entire stuff basically um, can I create from system yeah I think it would make sense so this one is gonna be string view this is a string view uh, sim conf uh, content. I think it has to be called content. Conf file path. Uh, content. Uh -huh. And for that one, data is going to be null. Um, so I th I'm thinking that um, SV from sister, we have to check whether this thing is null or not. If it's that, we're going to return that. Otherwise, we're going to return SV null. There we go. Otherwise, we return SV null. Um, okay, so after this, I'm going to be iterating through the lines. Here's the sim conf, content data, um, actually count greater than zero. I'm going to be chopping off the lines. Right, so here's the line SV chop uh, left. I think it's going to be, yeah, chop by delimiter. I want to chop it by delimiter. Scene conf content. Uh, and this is the thing I do. So after that, I need to um, take the line and chop by a comment. By delimiter. Um, line. Eh, this is how we do that. Line. Comment is going to be this. And... Uh, we can probably reassign the line to, to, to line here, right? So it's going to be that. And we are reassigning everything back to the line. And we can also try to trim on both of the ends. Uh, so check out the link. Uh, you didn't send, uh, I didn't see. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to check it later. Sure, thank you. All right, if a line count is greater than zero, um, this thing is going to like it. You don't know me. There is not that many things that I actually like. If you think that I'm going to like something, you're probably like 80% wrong. People usually get it really, really wrong every time. Mm. I don't like that many things. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, uh, line count. So after that, what we want to do, we need to split the name. Do you like C++? Uh, check out my FAQ about my favorite programming language. So there is specifically a question about what is my favorite programming language and the answer about C++ is there. Uh, yeah. So, thank you, thank you for asking. Uh, chop by delimiter. Uh, so this is going to be the line, and we're chopping specifically by this thing, and then it's going to be SV uh, trim. There we go. So then we're going to have something like name uh, value. So this could be actually a key, uh, and it's going to be simply trim uh, line. There we go. So that enables us with um, key values. Um, do you like the one name and architecture? I don't care about it. Mm. 
So, uh, I think we need to test this kind of shit. I think we need to test this kind of shit. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, the SVFMT. So, maybe we have to do it like this key. This is gonna be the key. SVARG key. Um, the thing is, I like um, is when. A thing or a person doesn't waste my time. Yeah, this is the shit I like, which is kind of rare, because uh, most of the things and most of the people waste my time every time. And it's super rare to see when something or somebody doesn't waste my time. So yeah, that's that's the thing I like, but it's too much to ask uh, these days, in my opinion. That's what I truly like. Um, okay, so we're gonna test this kind of stuff. Um, mm, all right, so here's the value. So string view. Oh yeah, we need to include this shit. Actually, we need to include um, sv dot h. Uh, chop by delimiter. I think it has to be called a sv. Right, it has to be called a sv. For example, stb library didn't waste my time today. Right, so they provided the way to um, change the allocator, but then uh, I wanted to uh, replace their reallocator and I couldn't um, do that because I needed to track the sizes. But then we discovered that you can actually have sized reallocation. So the author of this library actually thought about the user and realized, okay, so not everyone uh, wants to, um, you know, keep track of the sizes with their custom allocator. So let's actually give them the size of the buffer because we already know it. So we're not going to waste the time of the user of that library. And I really like that. It's so rare to see when uh, somebody actually thought, okay, let's not waste the person's time and add that additional feature. Um, because we can, because we we know that information, so let's not force the user to keep track of that information. So we can just give it to the user. It's just get them nice. This is this is the shit I like. This is the shit I like. Anyways, uh, uh, so what do we have here? Uh, something is wrong. Um, fragment shader. Okay, so this kind of worked. Um, did it? break something i feel like i broke something uh but apart from that everything looks all right so we at least managed to successfully parse everything but uh the shader went really in a, in a, in, a, in a really strange place i don't, I don't really know why oh boy everything loaded up a fragment shader lacks main what the fuck is going on um excuse me did it break something like completely? Um, I don't think I. Because everything worked before. Wait, what? Um, so reload shaders. Mm -hmm. So we just went through this entire thing. Um, yeah, so we printed a bunch of things and. Vertex shader. Well, oh yeah, I see. I see. I see. So this is a frag. There we go. Um, mm, there we go. So it worked. And uh, yeah, on top of that, we parsed the configuration file successfully. Right. So we have a scene. Uh, yeah, and we parsed it, so um, now we should be able to use that for the uh, <clears throat> for the for the hot reloading. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, uh, now <clears throat> here's what we can do: if sv equal key. Uh, SV, uh, what is it called? Frag shader. Mm. 
if it's a frag shader, right, if it's a frag shader, we have to replace the current frag shader in here. So we need a way to create, um, to turn stream view into, into sister. To do that, we need to allocate memory. We need to allocate memory. Okay, so let me uh, create a function. So we have something like slurp file. Um, let's let's introduce something like this. Um, sister from SV, right? And it's gonna be something like this. It's gonna be char because it will allocate the memory and we're gonna accept string view. Uh, we're gonna allocate all of that into the same memory, right? We're gonna allocate it into this. Uh, so should be all right. So this is SV and in here, what do we do? Uh, we just do the result mm, memory memory alloc SV size and we need uh, additional byte for null terminator right so then we do mem copy uh, so this is the destination the source is SV data and we copy SV size of those things and then uh, result SV size will be equal to the uh, zero and then we just return the result so there we go we have a function um, that um, you know converts all of that to sister perfect uh, reload shaders okay so if we encounter shader fragments we take the value sister from SV uh, is gonna be the value right and we set it to the frag shader uh, is it called frag uh, it's called fragment shader fragment shader file path there we go maybe we're gonna start with well we'll put frag in here first so it doesn't really matter else if sv equal key sv uh, vert shader right so here's a vert shader i feel like i'm getting sick yet again what the fuck is going on i already been sick am i am i going sick again Fuck, vertex shader file path. Uh, all right, so here's the vertex shader, and else if um, it's gonna be texture, and uh, we're gonna do the following thing: it's gonna be texture file path. Um, yeah, the same thing. Monk W. Yeah, it is in fact a little bit Monk W. You're not gonna lie. Uh, otherwise, we can. Uh, print an error mm, it's just that time of the year mm. all right so um, mm, mm, mm. we also need to keep track of the lines I think yes the usual thing line number zero line number uh plus plus and here we can do the following thing print f mm, so this is going to be this thing then zu warning um unknown unknown uh key unknown key and it's going to be mm, sv fmt mm, so sim conf file path line number line number and then uh, sv arg key sv arg key so it's gonna be just a warning telling us that something went wrong and that's it pretty much that is it so one of the things i wanted to do is um yeah i wanted to do something like this so we're gonna go back. Let's try to run this entire stuff. And doesn't compile. Uh, memory alloc implicit declaration. Oh, it's actually malloc. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, count. Anything else? Count. One more time. Oh my god. I made so many mistakes in in one how many mistakes i made in four lines like how more mistakes can you make like in four lines holy shit okay so that worked i think it has to be zu by the way it has to be zu all right everything seems to be working everything seems to be working and now i can go to my scene 
right here's my scene and i can say uh let's actually comment it out and let's use this one and it works so as you can see i can set up the texture uh through the configuration file and i can set it to any uh any texture without reloading this thing for example um i don't know so which one monkeys let's put monkeys so uh yep uh it's gonna be monka s png right and yep monka s and uh yep so i didn't even have to reload anything i just downloaded the file i put it in the configuration and it's reloaded automatically so i can just now customize so many things and uh we're gonna customize even more mm. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so let's go back to Pog. Um, Pog. So we also have flushed. I probably want to rename it to flushed. Right. Mm. Flushed. So there we go. That's pretty Pog. And this system is really robust because it doesn't leak any memory. Can we actually uh, demonstrate that this shit doesn't leak any memory? We probably cannot demonstrate that because somebody, I'm pretty sure somebody leaks some memory somewhere. Uh, because like in the library, specifically in JLFW, I'm pretty sure in JLFW somebody leaks something. So let's actually find out. I'm going to do a uh, val grind and let's just see. Uh, of course, there's already some shit going on in G in OpenGL and everywhere. Like, of, of course, and uh, definitely. Well, yeah, sure. You can never rely on this kind of sh shit. Something's gonna leak. Um, something's gonna leak. But yeah, that's pretty pog, I think. Alrighty, so we don't need this shit by the way. So also we have STB test. Let's remove that. Mm, so I want to do a little bit of a committee committee, but also I need to organize the entire thing. Mm, Alright, so let's create the SRC folder. I think the time has come to create this SRC folder and let's move everything there. Mm, and let's move everything there and uh, yep so we have stb also geo i think um, so. so this is the entire source code um now i also want to create images right so here are images and we're going to put everything there so monks pog and let's put everything there there we go mm, so this is a conf uh maybe then we can have shaders right so this is going to be the shaders uh i'm going to put all of them here so yes 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 kawaii desu I used to be trusted. Did you change your nickname? Um, what is he doing? Who? Who are you talking about? Alright, so Kidito. Uh, well, congratulations. So our bot is dumb. It's based on the names. So this is what it is. Unlucky. So we're also going to go to the scene conf and uh, this one is going to be shaders and this one is going to be um, images, right? Images, images. All right, so let's try to rebuild this entire stuff. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Kiditum. And everything seems to be working. And now if I go to the scene, uh, let's change it to, yep, cool, 
So it's still working. <clears throat> Everything still works. If I try to provide the file that doesn't exist, uh, yeah, it throws an error, right? It throws an error. And in here, we see that such file does not exist. So we can, the only thing that is required is to just to fix it and it works again. Mm. Alrighty, 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 alrighty. So what did we do exactly here? I think, um, oh, by the way, I didn't want to do that. Oh my god, Emacs, why are you so inconvenient? Okay, I just wanted to go here. I need to ignore, um, did it too. Uh, uh, so we already staged all of that shit. So let's stage this shit, and this shit, and this shit. So, and what did we implement? We implemented the hot reloading of the textures, right? The hot reloading of the textures. Hot reloading of the uh, textures. So maybe we're gonna turn this into the OpenGL template. So, yeah, maybe that's what we're gonna do. This is my lunch money. Use this it wisely. This is my lunch money, you say to listener. Thank you so much for four months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, now you're not only trusted, you, you, your message is longer than 40 characters is going to be visible on the stream. So yeah. By the way, here's the new uh, policy. So we have a shadow ban policy. If you're not subscriber or VIP or, you know, uh, specially marked person, uh, and you type a message that is longer than 40 characters, it's not going to be visible on the stream. So, I still can see it, you're not like banned or anything, it's just not going to be visible on the stream. Um, so yeah, but I still can see them. Um, mm, so if I change my user uh, to his old one, I get trusted. Technically, yes, but can you do that? Will Twitch allow you to change to someone's old nickname? That's a good question. So I think the time has come to document some shit, Kidito. Um, all right. Is this policy due to the cock joke? Ah, uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, you see? Works. Um, quick start. Uh, console. Hola. Make. Ah, Kidito. Mm, all right. Mm, Sin conf. Mm -mm -mm. So, Sin conf is what? Um, so we probably need to have uh, like a thing. Uh, key uh, value. Right. Mm, can I do something like this? Sin conf. So we go into the scene uh, conf and uh, yeah. key uh, description, description, uh, description. So in the keys we have, uh, so the first one is uh, frag shader. Mm, so this one is a path to the frag uh, meant shader. Yeah, path to the fragment shader. Uh, vert shader is a path to uh, the vertex. Vertex shader. Uh, yep. Yep. And another one is a texture. Uh, texture path to uh, the image for the uh, for the texture. There we go. Uh, so we have that, and uh, now. We're also going to have the following thing, controls. Right. So we can steal controls for the from the OpenGL template. Uh, OpenGL template. Uh, here is readme. Mm. Many people don't even know that name grep is a combination of ed commands. 
how many comments? So if it's a combination of uh, ED comments, how many comments does it combine? Can you tell me? Uh, two. RE stands for regular expression. So you have command G and uh, here you have a parameter of a regular expression and then p is a command to print the result of uh, g in the regular expression all right so um um reload scene conf okay uh hot reload uh sin conf uh i think this is how it's gonna be sin conf and all of the associated resources associated uh, with it resources okay so uh cool uh next is gonna be uh, kbd left um, arrow left arrow right <clears throat> step uh, manually manually step in time uh, back and forth back and forth in the posed mode. I think that kind of makes sense. Uh, yep. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. So menu is step in time back and forth in the posed mode. Uh, yep. So what do we have here? Um, okay, so update readme. So, and you can find the source code of what we're doing here if you're, of course, interested. I'm not sure if you are, but uh, there we go, you can do that. So, let's actually take a look at the readme, at the final readme. Let's take a look at the final readme. So, here we have a scene conf. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, here is the description, here is the controls, and I did a fucky wacky. I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, yeah, with the arrow. With the arrow we did a little bit of a fucky wacky. So, here is what we're gonna do here. Um, I'm gonna actually have something like this. So, arrow left, and then we're gonna have an arrow right. Arrow left and arrow right. There we go. Mm -hmm. Fix uh, arrow left and arrow right in the controls uh, section. In the control section, let's push that right at the ribbon. Okay, again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alrighty. Mm. It looks like shit. Why it looks like shit? Because I. Uh, that's really strange. It didn't work for... Is that because something like this? Uh, try to fix markdown rendering? This is really strange. Um, Alright, so is it gonna, is it gonna work? It doesn't work. What the hell is going on? Is that because... Do I have to do like... Uh, like less than or something? Is that what I have to do? Okay, oh, okay, okay, I see now. Thank you so much. I'm an idiot. Um, yeah. 
Ah. Oh my god, multiple curses is so goddamn fucking dumb. Ooh, I'm so fucking old. So goddamn dumb. And this is what I hate, right? Things that waste my time. Right, things that waste my time. I like things that don't waste my time, and I hate things that do waste my time. This thing wastes my time. Oh my god, holy shit. Alright, so fix typo. Typo. Let's, let's put it this way. We're fixing a typo. Uh, fixing a typo. Alright, is it gonna work now? Please work. It's not that. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, so again, you can find the source code of what we're doing here, if, of course, if you're interested. So, yeah. Um, now. Um, oh my god, I'm falling asleep. Um, uh, I need to make a small break. I really need a break. Um, so, let's go. Mm, it's been two minutes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh. Right, let's make a small break. You guys have fun. Don't forget to post your cocks. Yo, what's up? Welcome back. To back! How's it going? How's it going? Okay, guys. So... Uh, um, looks pretty pog. What's gonna be the next thing? So I had another thing that I wanted to do. Uh, so, hot reloadable mesh from an OBG file. Yeah. So, also hot reloadable mesh would be kind of cool, I think. The difference with the hot reloadable mesh is that. Um, <clears throat> so, what do we need right now? Right, we need uh, to have vertices, right? The colors and UVs. Alright, maybe this is what we're gonna support in the OBG file then. Um, so to facilitate that, I think we can implement an executable 
um, that dumps the current mesh in the in the obg format right so uh, how can we how can we call it like let's call it cube dot c uh, and this entire thing is it's not going to do anything special except just generate a cube uh, so we're going to include std io then we're going to include std lip uh, and uh, we're going to just put it like that um, yeah I'm falling asleep and I already had a coffee so it's kind of strange that I feel I feel weak <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyways so let me see uh, OBG yeah I already have it opened so we have vertices list of geometric vertices X Y Z W so you can have is optional list of texture coordinates list of vertex normals we don't have normals yet uh, polygonal face uh, elements um, so I guess for now we can basically assume like triples of vertices uh, triples of vertices as the um, as the triangles I'm pretty sure there's some conventions in there but I'm ignoring them for now uh, okay so object file format is a simple data format that represents 3d uh, geometry alone namely the position of each vertex and the UV uh, position of each coordinates uh, or is this is stored in a counterclockwise order by default making explicit declaration of face normals unnecessary that's actually pretty cool um, I remember parsing this one time it's actually easy to parse as far as I can tell uh, yeah looks pretty easy it's just line you parse it line by line so we already implemented a parser for this configuration format and it was actually super easy it's pretty much the same all right so but for now we need to we don't really need to parse it we just need to dump it all right so we just need to dump it so uh to dump it we need to generate a mesh so let's include geo.h so in geo.h we have a function called uh, generate cube mesh. Mm, so this is what we have here. A generate a cube mesh. Uh, so we have a color. Uh, so vertex. Uh, texture coordinates. Do, do we have colors though? List of... I don't think we have colors. Which is kind of sad, but... It is what it is, I suppose. List of texture coordinate UV. We're gonna go with UV, I suppose. All right. Um, so let's define these things separately. Um, yeah, like this. Uh, yep. And then um, just pass them like this. <clears throat> okay, generate cube mesh. Uh, we're gonna start with vertices. So I suppose we're gonna be iterating the triangles in uh, the cube. So triangles per cube. Uh, then within each triangles, we're iterating through the vertex, right? Vertex less uh, the vertices, uh, the amount of vertices in the triangle. There we go. And uh, what we're gonna be printing here, we're gonna be printing that. And it's gonna be just F, right? And it's gonna be a new line. Uh, so now it's gonna be something like mesh, tree, vert, uh, components, X. I think that's what we're gonna do. Uh, this one is going to be Y, Z, and W, and a boom, there we go. I forgot a semicolon, I think, and why don't you properly... Okay. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Okay, that's cool. Uh, that's, uh, that's, um... <clears throat> so, so this is what we're printing here. So, we also have to... Do we need to... Yeah. Unit vectors. 
So list of texture coordinates. Okay, now let's actually do the texture coordinates. Um, uh, so this is gonna be the texture. So we only need two of this thing. Mm. Uh -huh, and this one is gonna be UVs. Cool. UVs. Mm, do we have anything else? Do we need anything else? I didn't think so. I think everything's okay. So we're gonna have something like all, kidito, uh, kidito, and cube. In terms of a cube, uh, we're gonna depend only on the cube. And do we need anything else right now? I didn't, th yeah, we do need SOC geometry. Right, we need SOC geometry. Oh boy, uh, okay, so we need to CC, then uh, C flags, C flags, uh, cube, we also need to include that stuff, and also mathematical library, and I think that should be enough. Let's try to rebuild everything and see how it goes. So uh, cube actually worked quite well. Cool. So this is what we have in here. Uh, 2.5 hour lecture on completely fair schedule. You're back though. You're back. Hello, by the way. I hope you're feeling fine. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, was the lecture at least interesting? Or was it at least somewhat interesting? Not interesting, though, I can see. <laughs> All right. uh, but we implemented something cool that you might like. So now we have a configuration file of a scene, right? So, which is also hot reloadable. So uh, we can do this kind of shit, right? So, and in a scene, you can change uh, the texture, right? For example, I can do it something like that, and there we go. Uh, as you can see in the configuration you can specify the fragment shaders that you're gonna use the texture and we're working on hot reloading the mesh right so uh, yeah that's pretty cool I think so we can also do uh, monkeys so this is monkeys hot reload everything and yes 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 uh, what if we don't have a texture Oh, it just says that. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, it's just trying to uh, reload something that that is by default. Huh. Ah, yeah, I see. Uh, key comrade. Uh, how does it recognize that configuration file has changed? It doesn't. It hot reloads uh, by F5. You have to press F5. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so let's continue. I'm pretty sure um, in the OBG file, things that don't have to be split in sections. I'm pretty contains basically there's a free form uh, curve surface attribute elements free form curve surface uh, free form. Okay, so here's my idea. What if I in the cube I actually gonna mix them up uh, and collapse these two nested loops into a single one because why not uh, I think it's not that big of a deal uh, so here uh, all right so here's the data um, so it contains the vertices and whatnot it would be kind of cool to have like to know the amount of vertices if you know what I mean so they didn't provide you the amount of vertices right you have to count them yourself uh, which is not that bad of a thing, I guess, but it's just something that you have to do. Mm. It's just something that you have to do, just kind of number of lines and do some math. Yeah, probably. We can also have a limited amount of uh, vertices that we support. Um, for example, we can support thousand vertices. And if we can fit that, uh, we can we just crash or something like that yes 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 
by the way, uh, obg, uh, obg file vertex colors. Is there an extension? How do you include vertex color information in obg file? Um, Blender can export PLY files, which are text based, uh, very easy to parse and include vertices colors. The hard way is to change the OBG exporter code so that it includes. Okay, what is a PLY file? PLY file. Maybe we're gonna use PLY file. Uh, polygon file format. Uh, US. Uh, that's very strange. Um, uh, shadow bank. Uh -huh. <sighs> Even Wikipedia is posting cock on my stream. Holy! <laughs> I mean, it's a piece of art. It should be. It should be okay. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> everybody is posting cock on my stream. The fuck? <sighs> Got you hyper. All right. Uh, I didn't understand PLY format, so whatever. Mm. Um. Eh, maybe it doesn't matter. Every cock is a piece of art. Yeah. So let's try to uh, let's try to load this shit. Um, so it's gonna be a cube, right? This is a cube. Do you really need per vertex color? Yes, I do need it. All right. Uh, OBG. Um. So what we're going to introduce here, we're going to introduce scene uh, and we're going to do a mesh. Uh, okay, buddy, I think you need to be timed out. Uh, one hour should be enough for you. Don't ask stupid questions, okay? So just for the record, you got timed out because you ask stupid questions. That's the reason. Um, all right. Uh, and yes, stupid questions do make me salty. Yeah, they trigger me so much. I don't like when people ask stupid questions. Uh, so now this is going to be a mesh and it's going to be cube or BG. Um, <clears throat> All right, so let's go. Mm, it's gonna be SRC. We need to. We'll need to store this stuff somewhere. We'll need to store this stuff somewhere. Mm. So this is the texture. I think it has to be like images. Um, let's put it this way. Um, I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna put nulls in all of these like default things. The the scene is not gonna be null though. The scene is not gonna be null, and this one is not modifiable as well. Those things are in fact modifiable. Uh, okay, so after that, uh, we need to double check that you set all of these uh, things. Mm. If this thing is equal to null, uh, it's going to be a printf. So it's a printf and going to be warning. Uh, vert, what is it called by the way? So scene, um, yeah, vert shader is not specified in S. So I'm gonna provide what? Uh, so scene conf file path. Uh, scene conf file path. So yeah, this is essentially what we're gonna do here. If uh, I think we'll also need to, yeah, we'll need to exit with an error, an indicated error. Uh, 
so then we're gonna say frag is not specified. Frag shader is not specified. There we go. And the texture. Uh huh. Specified. Mm -hmm. Looks good to me. Uh, looks good to me. Uh, fail if you didn't specify any of these things. Mm. Yeah, mesh. Thinking about mesh now. Uh, thinking about mesh. Um, so it's going to be const char uh, obg mesh file path. Might as well actually put it like this. So it's going to be that. And now uh, this one is going to be uh, mesh, mesh file path, sister from SV value. There we go. Um, so here's the mesh. Mm. Uh, and uh, we also need to um, specify that. If you didn't, uh, well, we need to say if you didn't specify this kind of shit. Um, yeah, it's an error. Okay, cool. Um, we also need like a vertex count and whatnot. To have vertex counts. Mm. I need to make a cup of tea. Do anyone have any questions while I'm making a cup of tea? Why I feel so like shit yet again? I already... I already like was already recovering from being sick and I feel like shit yet again. Streamlabs. Uh, the demo was justified. Thank you so much for four dollars fifteen uh, fifteen cents. Sorry, Totin, I will never ask stupid questions again. The timeout was justified. I mean, you don't have to uh, commit to never asking stupid question again. You can ask as many stupid questions as you want. It's just every time you ask a stupid question, you're going to be timed out for one hour. So, yeah, feel free to ask as many stupid questions as you want. I'm totally fine with that. So, and thank you for uh, four dollars and 15 cents. Thank you so much. All right. You don't owe me anything, actually. You don't have to commit to, like, to that. Like, just ask as many stupid questions as you want. You owe me nothing. It's just like every time you do that, you're going to be tired out. Um, I think it's fair. Mm. All right. Uh, does anyone have any questions? If I ask smart questions, will I get VIP for not one hour? You already have a VIP. You already have a lifetime VIP. Um, <clears throat> oh, God. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the kitchen, turn on the kettle, and I'm gonna be back uh, very soon. Um.
<sighs> okay, so we need to store these vertices and uh, colors, um, not really colors, but uh, UV coordinates as well. Um, so let me see. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We'll have to introduce some interesting shite. All right, so this is where we have a memory, right? And uh, okay, after that, I'm going to introduce vertices uh, capacity, and we're going to say that we're going to support up until thousand vertices. Okay, so we're going to have something like this: uh, vertices, uh, and this is the vertice capacity. Uh, so vertices. Um, Vertex positions, right? Positions. So here are vertex positions. Vertex UVs, uh, which are two dimensional, vertices capacity. And then we're going to have a uh, vertex size, right? Uh, which is going to be. Um, all right. Vertex capacity. Right. So we're going to have thousands of them. I'm going to have thousands of them. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, <clears throat> unfortunately, we cannot keep them in parallel, I think. Uh, let me pour a cup of tea. So you may have a situation when uh, positions and UVs are like not in sync, if you know what I mean. Um, it is really strange, in fact. Um, so yeah, because we are reading the user data, we're reading the user data, and it could be anything actually. Oh boy, oh. I don't feel good. Um, maybe I just need to, uh, to drink a cup of tea. <sighs> I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. Mm. So I probably just need, it, uh, need the tea. So I don't like the OBG format. It's so easy to make incorrect OBG format. And because of that, you need to make a lot of consistency checks. So it's kind of... don't really like when you have to make so many consistency checks. Uh, but I guess that's what we have to do anyway. So this is going to be like the size and there we go. So while parsing, we'll have to have separate size variables for all of these arrays. And uh, then after we parsed everything, we need to check if the, uh, the amount of positions is equal to the amount of UVs and uh, issue some warnings or not issue warnings. It's just like, uh, uh, it's kind of a meh format, I guess. Um, I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of this OBG format. Is there any other... Formats. I, I presume that all of the OB, uh, like uh, 3D formats are probably overcomplicated because uh, all of them were created for like some sort of industry needs and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I can see that OBG is already the simplest format. Uh, too simple for its own good. Yeah, that's what it feels like. That's what it definitely feels like. It's too simple. Uh, all right. 
I guess we can work with it. I guess we can work with it. Um, um, all right. <clears throat> Vertex capacity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh boy. So when we load in the shader, right? Load shaders. Uh, so we have a mesh file. We assign the mesh file. Uh, first thing we're gonna try to do. Um, yeah, we're reloading the program, right? We're loading the program, reloading the texture, right? And the next thing we want to do. Uh, Successfully reloaded scene. Um, uh, reload mesh. So let's try to reload the mesh. To reload mesh, we need to uh, read the content of the mesh file. So it's going to be something like mesh content, right? I'm going to slurp the file. Uh, slurp file mesh file path, and uh, we're going to instantly convert it into sister into SV string view. Right, so if mesh content uh, equal to null, right, if it's equal to null, we're gonna say f print f. Um, right, we also have to indicate an error, of course, we have to indicate an error. Mm, something like this. Uh, std error uh, warning. Mm -hmm could not read file and we can provide the mesh file path mesh file path like this and the reason why we couldn't read all of that is because str error error no there we go cool um so now <clears throat> content mesh content so um yeah let's start iterating through all of that so this is going to be mesh content uh count is greater than zero right and we're going to split uh, like uh, parse everything by lines so string view line um sv chop by delimiter uh mesh content uh, mesh content Mm, we also want to keep track of the line, of course. We also want to keep track of the line. Size t, line number, zero, and plus plus line number. Plus plus line number. Um, okay, chop by delimiter, delimiter is a new line. Then we take the line and we chop it yet again uh, by the hash symbol, right? So because that's the comment in obg file, is it not? Yes, it is the comment. Um, also, we should not forget to uh, trim everything afterwards. Let's actually trim it. And this entire thing also should be trimmed just in case. And we're reassigning it back to the line. And if line count is greater than zero, that means we need to process this line appropriately. So this is how we process all, all the shit. So the next thing we need to do, we need to chop by a space, right? So um, uh, string view kind, right? SV chop by delimiter, and it's gonna be line uh, by space. We chop in by space, and we're also instantly trimming this entire stuff as well. Right, and we have several kinds in here. If uh, is we equal, if kind is equal to V, this is the vertex, right? This is the vertex. If it is equal to VT, this is the texture. Otherwise, we're dealing with an unknown kind of a command or whatever the fuck is that supposed to be called. I don't know what the fuck is supposed to be called. All right, so we can even uh, put a warning there, right? So std error, uh, warning, unknown, uh, how is that called? Unknown uh, obg kind of line, and we can provide something like svfmt. 
Uh, all the popular format looks like JSON. Oh my god, that's exactly what I need in my life, more JSON. Okay, so, and we're gonna provide this kind, and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna ignore this line, right? We can also provide the, the place where that happened, right? So it's gonna be zero. Uh, and uh, mesh file path and line number right so we can speed out a warning saying like i don't know about this thing uh i don't know about this thing mm, okay so if we have v uh we have to be a little bit more uh careful i guess interestingly enough interestingly enough we can iterate yeah we can do a pretty cool thing um Uh, where we will iterate through v4 components right we iterate through v4 components and um, yeah while it's less and uh, line count is greater than zero something like this right. mm, but we have to be a little bit Just because I wrote standard compliant JSON doesn't like doesn't mean that I like to use JSON. <laughs> As a matter of fact, after you wrote a standard compliant JSON, you kind of start hating it even more. <laughs> so it's, it kind of has an opposite effect. Um, so. Because you start to realize how much of a piece of shit that format is in great, great details. Like you, like with the magnifying glass, you can see all of the holy shit. That's a pretty shitty format. Um, you were supposed to defeat the JSON, not join them. Yeah. Um, especially after you realize that. Uh, like through how much effort you have to go to properly lay out the memory so the like iterating the json document is cache friendly and stuff like that is just holy shit mm. i think this person is 15. Anyways, um, so what do we have? We have a kind and uh, yeah, I need to keep track of different things here. So it's going to be something like uh, position count. Uh, do, do we call them vertex positions, right? Vertex positions. Yeah, positions count. Uh, UVs count. Yeah, so that's what we do. Uh, and every time we encounter them, we'll have to do the following thing. So it's going to be positions is a too long of a name. Pose. Eh. Positions. Positions count. Uh, issue somebody the command, please. That'll be, that'll be nice. Uh, can I do something like v4 zero? Right, because I want to zero initialize this entire thing. I'm zero initializing this entire thing and. So this is going to be like this for comps plus plus i. Okay. Um, so 
so this is the components. It's gonna be in like this. And here's the thing I have to do. Okay, so let's try to parse them as long as a line has any symbols, right? So this is what we're gonna try to do. Um, so we're gonna try to uh, take the component, right? So here's the component, it's gonna be SV, chop by delimiter, uh, and we're chopping everything by space. So that gives us the delimiter, and then we wanna trim this entire thing. Right, and we wanna trim this entire thing. And if uh, component is, um, the, the size of the component is greater than zero, we can try to parse it as uh, as a float, but parsing it as a float will require converting it into the um, into the sister. But we can do that actually. Uh, so this is a component SV. And then we're gonna have a component uh, component sister, and we can do sister from SV comp uh, SV. There we go. Um, so and then we can use something like str2d. I'm pretty sure we can use something like str2d. str2d. Uh, so this is going to be the pointer, right? So comp uh, comp sister, right? Comp sister. Um, and do we really care? I think it has to be to app because we're using apps in here. Right, no. Uh, so this is going to be float, and uh, then we take the vertex position position count uh, CSI equal to that, and looks good to me, I suppose. And after we handled all of the components, we have to increment positions count. So that's how much time it takes for me to parse all of that shit. Um, yes. I can probably, well, yeah, we also need to zero initialize all of those things. We pro can probably uh, sort of like mem set uh, this thing uh, with zero, right? Mem setting it with zero uh, with the size of uh, this entire stuff, right? Um, so we take the position and we are mem setting it to zero, zero initializing all the components, then we iterate through the components as long as we have something uh, and we uh, par try to parse that and set everything accordingly. And set everything accordingly. Um, so uh, then we, we're going to have like a similar thing but with, with textures, right? So with textures we have um, UVs, uh, actually vertex UVs. Um, query, query replace positions UVs, uh, boom, 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 there we go, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. So, but instead of V4, we have to use V2 components, yeah, of course, of course, of course. So after that, uh, after that, if Positions count and UVs count are not equal to each other. That means there is discrepancy uh, between UVs and uh, positions, and we have to at least report it. Uh, so I can try to do it like this: if uh, positions count not equal UVs count, uh, we're gonna say um, f print f std error. Uh, warning. Uh, we can also provide the place where it happens. Warning. The amount of positions is not equal to um, vertices, is not equal to the amount uh, of UVs. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> All right. Um, we are gonna ignore this fact and just assume that there is only z uh, vertices. Eh. Amount of positions and 
is not equal to the amount of UVs, we're gonna ignore this fact and just assume that there is only ZU. Um, yeah. Vertices, uh, vertices, vertices, vertices. Okay, so this is essentially what we're gonna do here. How we're gonna approach that? So vertex, uh, vertex size is gonna be equal to the position count, and if uh, vertex size is greater than UVs count, uh, we're gonna reset the vertex size to UVs count like this. Uh, all right, so here is that, and then if they're not equal, we're doing it like this. Okay, so uh, positions count, uh, UVs count, and then vertex size. There we go. So this is how we're going to report that. The amount of positions is not equal to the amount of UVs. We're going to ignore this fact and just assume that there is only this amount of vertices. Okay, cool. So yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna be try we're gonna try to be a little bit more flexible, right? So we're gonna allow to not specify all of the UVs. So we can just we're gonna assume that there is one vertex like left uh, less or something. I don't know. I cannot speak. I'm sorry. Um, cool. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> um, okay, let's try to compile this into a shit. Let's see what's gonna happen. And we need to remove the... Oh yeah, I completely forgot that we now need to remove the generate cube or something. Generate cube mesh, we're gonna remove all of that shit. Oh shit, and we need to like re um, recreate the buffers and whatnot. Oh fuck, oh shit. Okay, uh, that's very interesting. So, I completely forgot about this shit. Right completely forgot about it and since we don't have a colors I'll have to get rid of the colors which is kind of sad because I really need the colors of the vertices because I used them for debugging purposes but now I'll have to remove them because the stupid format does not support that and the question is why am I putting up with that format well probably because I potentially want to use it for uh, potentially want to uh, edit these obg files in Oh boy, in Blender, I'm not even sure if I can open it in Blender, by the way. So I have a cube OBG. Is it even possible for me to open it in Blender? So let's let's find out. I'm gonna just literally try to open it in Blender. Is it gonna show anything? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Probably not gonna show anything. Interesting. All right, so it opens something, uh, but is it that thing? So it looks like a, like a regular cube, but is that the cube that we generated or not? It doesn't look like the cube that we generated because our cube is not centered at the origin. Uh, so... Mm, okay, uh, let me see. Uh, now I'm gonna go to src main.c and I'm gonna remove all this stuff. So hot reboot mesh from obg file. So, and uh, I have to move it to the vertex. Uh, where, where are the shaders? Um, so let's put it this way. Yeah, I'm gonna remove the cores. Mm. All right. Um, so how are we gonna even reload all of that shit? That's a good question. Uh, do we just remove the corresponding buffers? I think we just remove the corresponding buffers. And I just realized that you can actually allocate several buffers, right? You can always gen uh, several buffers. Mm -hmm. Gen buffers, right? Because you can specify, uh, specify the buffers. Mm, so we know for sure that we're gonna have like two buffers because we have two like vertex attributes. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cute. And I'm thinking, how do we do that? Oh boy, oh boy! I wish I felt a little bit better because I have a lot of ideas. A lot of 
ideas on how to organize this entire shit. Yeah. So since we have a texture ID global, we also need to make these uh, buffers global as well. So when I'm generating the buffers, uh, so this is the individual uint. Um, <clears throat> Um, how can you make sure in OpenGL that you have the memory for that buffer? Uh, when you allocate in memory with malloc, how do you know that you have enough memory for on the computer for that malloc? How do you know that? Buffer IDs. So. Uh, vertex attribute uh, count so this is how many of vertex attributes we're gonna have mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we're gonna have two of them and we can also define something like I guess vertex uh, attribute position going to be zero what vertex attribute uv is going to be one and you'll be able to access them like that so buffer ids can i delete the buffers now delete the buffers uh yeah i should be able to delete the buffers mm. Mm. I thought you get zero void if you can't allocate memory. Yes, it is true. What's interesting is that both of your statements, the statement of Ji Yang and Tada SV123 are true. Yes, both of them are true. Uh, and there's literally no contradiction in these two statements. You just have to carefully read both of the statements to understand why there's no contradiction there. Uh, all right. So what do we have here? So we're allocating this stuff. Uh, we'll send your pointer to zero if it can't allocate the buffer on GPU. Uh, it doesn't even send you any pointers, I think. And we'll just to read the cash. I would expect to jail gen buffer to or to throw some sort of an error. If generated if it's executed between the execution of begin and end. I need to delete the, the buffers. Mm, well, uh, delete buffers. I'm not an OpenGL pro, uh, programmer, and me neither, to be fair. But I would expect if there's uh, not enough memory to do anything, it will just generate an error, just like a uh, It does, in fact, make sense to me. Uh, vertex attribute count. And then we can um, buffer IDs, right? So we're going to delete the buffers first, and then we're going to try to recreate them. Um, two, 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 two. All right, so we managed to do that. And let's try to now jail enable uh, vertex attribute yeah so we need to do these things we need to move these two things actually we have three of them right enable uh-huh so we're gonna take that thing and that thing and that, that thing and we're gonna move everything to reload shaders so this function shouldn't be called reload shaders but it's called reload shaders <laughs> anyway uh right so here it is this is cube mesh so it has to be ver like vertex position 
I remember correctly, right? Uh, so, um, vertex positions, right? So, vertex positions, size of vertex positions zero multiplied by uh, vertex size, vertex size, and then we just provide vertex positions, vertex positions. There we go, looks good to me. So, the colors that we lost, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Um, so vertex UVs, this is what it's going to be called, vertex UVs, this one is zero, multiplied by vertex size, okay, so here I have to enable vertex uh, attribute position, there we go, I'm pretty sure I can get it from the shader, but I'm, I'm too lazy to do that, vertex attrib UV, uh, so here we have vertex UVs, Vertex UVs and V2 components, and this one is going to be that. There we go, there we go. Oh, interestingly enough, uh, we also need to remember the things. We also need to remember the things. So, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe array from. Oh, shit, yeah. We'll probably want to. Uh, do this kind of stuff differently. Um, yeah, gel gen buffers. We can provide vertex vertex attrib count and buffer IDs. So we generated a bunch of buffer buffers in here. All right, and in here, then uh, we want to try to do something like this. Yes, 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 yes. Go away, this. Yeah. So this one is gonna be like this. So it's gonna be array buffer, buffer IDs, uh, vertex, a tree position. There we go. And the data is well essentially we just move a vertex position in here. Uh, what was it? What was it actually? Oh it was a size. Okay, size of uh, size of I'm gonna bring it here and the actual data is gonna be here so it's it's, it's gonna be a little bit easier to get rid of that abstraction completely yeah there we go so we generated a bunch of buffers then we bind the first buffer and we associate the data with that buffer uh, and then we're gonna bind the second buffer similarly um, okay so this is the buffer this one is a UV uh, and this one is going to be this thing. Uh, this. And there we go. So that's cool. That's pretty cool. So array uh, buffer something something. Oh my god. What was that array? Uh, yeah, this thing is not used anymore. This thing is not used anymore. Uh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Do we need anything else? I think that's it. I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anything else anymore. Uh, okay, so we need to recompile the stuff and go through the compilation errors. Let's go through the compilation errors. Warnings, std error. We're going to put std error here. Uh, all right. Anything else? Std error. Std error. Mm, I forgot to put std error pretty much everywhere. Comp sv. Uh huh. Comp sv. Uh, okay, so we didn't specify the file, so I think we need to specify mesh file path in here. Uh, anything else? Vertex positions. So I see what's going on in here. Uh, maybe we just need to force it to be void star. I think that would make sense. Oh. Wait a second, it has to be index. Oh, I see what's going on. Uh, vertex attribute position. Vertex. Eh. Emacs is just too slow. 
uh, vertex UV, uh, vertex attribute UV, like this. Uh, cool. Must be higher. You expose yourself as Russian. <laughs> This is the, so fucking easy to expose yourself because the Russians don't know the difference between difficult and hard. The same way they don't know the difference between simple and easy. Uh, <laughs> effective, efficient. Uh, because we don't have distinguish, distinction between these words in Russian language. Uh, so. It's actually generally Slavs. You can spot Slavs by not knowing the differences between these two words. Uh, Alright, so... So you're horror when you... <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, but I mean, I, I guess you can use word hard in this particular context as well, but I mean, you still expose yourself. Okay, mm. and it doesn't work, yay! Vertex color undeclared, uh, really? Uh, vertex color, oh shit, yeah, yeah, so in the fragment, um, you know what, I wanna slightly change the color of the uh, failed shader, uh, hot, so let's, ma let's make it not as harsh as it is right now, because it's pretty harsh. Uh, so this is not what I wanted. It's really hard, uh, like hard, difficult to look at. I mean, you can also use hard in this particular context. Uh, yeah. So okay, so it's not as harsh anymore. So that's that's perfect. Um, um, vertex color. E okay, so I suppose we have to go to the fragment. Uh, fragment, so uh, vertex color. Uh, in the vertex, ver uh, so we don't have to provide this anymore. And this anymore as well. Is it gonna work? Uh, it kinda did. It kinda did, but it uh, doesn't display anything. Nice. I'm really happy, by the way. So it successfully reloaded the scene, but it did nothing. It literally did nothing. Um, cool. So I wonder if it even loaded up anything. I wonder if it did. Maybe it did. Uh, so, yeah. so this is the fragment thingy hmm. <sighs> and the, the cool thing is that uh, now you're gonna have a great time troubleshooting it because OpenGL do be like that quite often right something doesn't work I'm not gonna tell you what you just go figure it out you have to figure it out I'm not gonna tell you where, you did a fucky wacky, figure it out yourself. Not gonna even give a hint, render docker, it, it doesn't work on my machine, unfortunately. I tried it, it doesn't work. I wish it worked, but it doesn't. Uh, vertex, okay, so here are the vertices, and... Oh, yeah. Oh, shit, uh, do I have to also... Yeah, I, I mean, it shouldn't be a problem, though. Right, vertex, uh, vertex count. Is it called? Uh, it's called vertex size. So should work, but it fucking doesn't. And of course, I need to. Ah! Emacs is too slow. I'm typing faster than Emacs is capable of processing my keystrokes. This is so fucking bad. <laughs> All right, so let's let's try to see how many of them we loaded up. Um, okay. Uh, load it, ZU vertices, uh, it's going to be something new, vertex size. Uh, uh, come on, you can do that. Uh, 
36 vertices. That does in fact make sense. Um, let's try to show them, I suppose. This one's gonna be something like size T. Uh, yeah, it, it cannot edit text fast enough. So fucking bad. Uh, okay, print F uh, is gonna be V4 FMT V4 arg uh, vertex positions, right? And what's funny is that it didn't even throw any errors. I put so many checks to th to actually warn me about really weird situations, and none of them were triggered, and it still doesn't work. That's how bad OpenGL fucking is. You you're trying to be super fucking careful. It's still not gonna not gonna work because fuck you. Like you spend so much freaking time to just make sure like it's it's not gonna work because fuck you. Such a great API, holy shit. Uh okay, so here are the uh these things, so that does make sense. Uh <clears throat> It does in fact make sense, uh, and for the UVs, right, UVs are like V4, right? V2 actually, right. uh, yeah, come on, give me that, and there they are, this doesn't look super fishy to me, to be fair, though there's something weird in here. Oh yeah, okay, so that's 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 fine. Um, mm, uh, all right, I don't know what you guys talking about. <sighs> okay, so where could I fuck it up? Like, uh, all right, so reload the thing. Reload the shaders. Okay, uh, reload the shaders and uh, we're deleting the texture. Then we delete the buffers. Okay, so we delete the buffers. That makes sense. Let's count. Uh, that, that makes sense. So we loaded everything. We processed everything. So that makes sense here. We even double check that everything's okay here. We generate new buffers for that buffer ID, we bind, we associate the data, we enable that specific attribute position, uh, and then uh, we just, just, just fucking associate it. Like, that's what we do, we fucking associate it. Nothing much to say. So then we bind that buffer, we add the data of that buffer there. Uh, just enable it, just enable it, there we go. Well, where is the problem? Where is the problem? I don't fucking know. OpenGL is not gonna tell you. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> All right. Maybe it's just a black cube. Uh, it does not contradict to what I said. Vertex. Um, mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, sure. sure. Found it. I can found it. Yeah, there we go. So now it works. So, uh, we can take a look at the cube, obj, yeah, reload it, don't, okay, now, now look, 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 I'm gonna comment out one thing, what the fuck is this shit, okay, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the amount of uh, positions 36 is equal to the amount of UVs 35, we're gonna assume that there's something, and it kind of worked, which is really strange, but yeah, um, I really hate that it prints this shit now. 
we need to get rid of that thing. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm. The bottom one missing face. Ah, okay. You can see it though. Yeah, there we go. You can you can see it now. Yeah, here. All right, so we can probably even fix it now, super quick. Uh, if we go to OBG, right, and we do something like this. Now it has it. No, it. Now it doesn't. So we can hot reload this kind of shit. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we can probably take a whole triangle out of this entire thing. Scanning it out, and that gives like uh, that removes like a whole triangle though. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we can do it like this, and that removed like a whole thing now. So now there is no bottom, as far as you can tell. Uh, yeah, so there is completely no bottom. So yeah bring it back so now we should be able to even for example generate a sphere uh, or something else and just put it there and technically should work I think so there's also a problem that uh, there is like some sort of adjustment in the shader right because if we don't adjust thing in the shader in a vertex shader it's gonna look like shit. There is like very specific adjustment like this one. So if I get rid of that, it's gonna look really yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, it looks upset and it also looks super weird. Um, something's also missing completely like yeah. So and I think the um the, this kind of adjustment has to be baked into the um into the mesh itself, but uh Maybe it has to be actually done a little bit later. Uh, maybe it has to be done a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So, it looks like shit, by the way. Looks like shite. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So this color reloading is actually pretty cool. Uh, reloading is pretty hot, not gonna lie. So, uh, um, okay. uh, let's do committee committee. Um, maybe then, even pushy pushy. Who knows? Um, all right. Ta -ta -ta -ta. What happens if you have two textures? The whole world will collapse. The computer will catch on fire. And I'll be banned from Twitch. That's what's going to happen. All right. Uh... Cool. So what do we have here? <clears throat> uh, read uh, mesh from a hot reloadable reloadable file. Right. And let's push that right into the repo. Let's push that right into the repo. Right into the repo. Mm, right. All of white. Okay. Cool. 
There was something that I wanted to do. I forgot what I wanted to do. Uh, when I was looking through the shaders and stuff like that, what I wanted to do... Um, I don't remember. I have an idea, actually. Um, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so scene. There's something wrong with my texture. There's definitely something wrong with my texture. Yeah, it's it's really meta. <laughs> It is in fact very meta. Didn't think about that. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we actually increase rotation, for example? Uh, shaders vert. Um, you know what I want to do? I want to extract the camera metrics into like its own separate thing. Let's uh, call it camera, I suppose. And it's going to be basically before. Uh, before translation, yeah, this one is going to be matrix camera, uh, maybe just camera, and multiply it like that, uh, multiply it like that, and uh, it's going to be one, there we go. So this is the camera, and uh, now we also apply that to the camera, camera multiply. So will it work? It doesn't work. Why it doesn't work? Did I do a fucky wacky? And oops, yes, I did. I can I can see where exactly I did a fucky wacky. Uh, matrix. It's a mat four. And yeah, there we go. So the reason why I wanted to do that is that because now I want to uh, slightly change the uh, rotation. What if we multiply the rotation by two? Uh, right. And will it rotate faster? Yes, it rotates way faster now, so we can control that automatically. Uh, this is actually <laughs> pretty dizzy. Uh, so, and in scene, you know what would be even cooler? To sort of pass uni uh, uniforms through this file? Yeah, there's too many ideas. Uh, there's too many ideas. Even make it even faster now. It's pretty cool. Mm. Is that even legal? Yes, it is legal. <clears throat> All right. So what do we have here? Add the uh, the texture. Yes, add the texture. Uh, all right. Extract camera metrics. Extract camera metrics. Not matrix, matrix. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna push that right into the repo. So in the main, do, I think I addressed all of the to-dos that I wanted to address. All of the to-dos were successfully addressed. Uh, and I also wanted to start working on the lighting today, on the simple lighting. But unfortunately, um, I'm already streaming for four hours and I feel like under the weather today i didn't really feel great today so i think i'm gonna finish the stream here uh and uh i think we're gonna try to tackle the lighting tomorrow we implemented a pretty cool system here with the scene um which is actually extendable you can easily add more parameters here and all of that is hot reloadable and uh, we implemented a pretty cool memory allocator that simplifies uh, simplifies managing the memory 
I really like that. Uh, but unfortunately, boys and girls, it is time for me to go. It is time for me to go. Thanks, everyone, who's watching right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. And I see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow, according to the schedule, we are supposed to be doing virtual machine. But I kind of want to uh, like finish this project, this small project, and get it to some interesting uh, state. Uh, so yeah, we're probably going to continue doing this thing tomorrow. Uh, check out our schedule page, uh, which is completely fucking outdated, so I don't know if there's any point to read that. Check out our bots channel where we archive our streams, and check out our Discord server for offline discussion with the community. And yeah, that's, that's it for today. That's it for today. Thanks everyone, and I see you all tomorrow. Love you all. Mwah.